This is different. <laughs> Does anyone Hello? <laughs> yeah, does anyone feel does something feel different to you guys? Yeah. I feel I don't know so it free. It's like this weird <laughs> tingly feeling in my body that something new is about to go down, but I don't know what it is. You know, you make one too many joke about Grant cutting someone's mic over the years and you're gone from the podcast. That's what I said. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> so I finally cut the dead weight. And, I was about uh, to say, like, I feel so light and unfettered yeah, from the I, shackles of male I, domination. Yeah. I mean, I think that's it. And I feel like I saw I I I I feel like I'm not going to be like, I'm not living in constant fear of being cut to my core at any given second. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. That's like, true. Be, There's some. Yeah, that was it. I was going to say, yeah, that uh, I feel like there might not be, I might not go to bed crying tonight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's an offhand joke that will send me reeling for weeks. I mean, <laughs> yeah. make you rethink everything in your life. It's just like, wow. Yeah, no. El, sure you know, the night's, my, uh, the night's young. The, the night's, night's young. young. <laughs> Who knows? You know, absolute power corrupts absolutely, yeah. they say. That's right. Maybe it's the it's chair. True. Maybe it's the big <laughs> chair that does it. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, do you feel do you feel sharpened by a whetstone of, of the mind, uh, Matthew? I feel like it's more like I've been beaten into submission with a bludgeoning stone in my head. <laughs> But okay, that was a little darker than I. Um, <laughs> I'm so meant excited to, go out the game to be here. <laughs> well, exactly. For on once. That note. Hello, everybody. I'm Hi. Matthew Kafakaza, and welcome to New Game. Who dis? Who? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> this is the show where we here at the Glass Cannon Network uh, find new games, or at least games we haven't played before and then we stumble blindly through the rules and hope that what we play approximates the actual game that was designed um is that a fair approximation of what the show is skid you skid you've been on the show before what do you think yeah that's about it we <laughs> stumble through this rule set that we don't really know and get a bunch of people mad and then we go to bed but we do it really earnestly like we really yeah we put all our effort into it we're just not very good yeah. yeah, exactly. Your best wasn't good enough. Right. That's what my husband tells me every morning. That's our refrain. <laughs> we did our best, but I guess our best wasn't good enough. So now that's I sing that every night when we're yeah. done. Yeah. Wow. It's your anthem. <laughs> that's our anthem. <laughs> well, I just picture you like in the shower, like crying, like as yeah. you sing. That's, that's the soundtrack. Howling at the moon. Playing over the tears. <laughs> We did well, our best. Well, we kid, we kid, uh, because we really are very excited about this show. And it's not just because of the games, but also because it gives us at the network a chance to expand the family. And we can rotate cast in and rotate GMs in and have new friends and old friends and new old friends and old new friends and everyone. It's just a party. It's just a party. Yeah. And I, tonight, I tonight, we're going to be diving into a little game called Tales from the loop. Oh, oh my goodness. So uh, exciting. Tales from Loop is published by Free League or Free League. Uh, mm. So Ellie on a scale Ellie, of, Ellie's already upset. Yeah, I was going to ask on a scale Correct of like him. one to terrible, how bad was that pronunciation? Did we set up an Ellie meter before the stream so that we exactly. could like measure like an or, applause or, meter? Like my vein, it's going to explode yeah. at the end of it. And, and it's actually pronounced Elometer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. seriously ellie that is the f the the only joke i will make about s sweden probably oh. for the next 10 i minutes. mean the joke's on you because everyone in sweden is gonna be like <laughs> do you remember how he said fria ligan is how you Ooh. say it wow that's so different than how matthew said it yeah. Wow. It was so sensual. I had no idea. I yeah, know. you have it's to say It's embarrassing is what it is. <laughs> oh, man. I was just to be in this chair happened. right now. That's, that's just like, damn. I know who's going to bed crying tonight. Yeah. <laughs> damn oh, it. Matthew. It only took it 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Your hopes oh. disappeared immediately. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted about... Four minutes. That's yeah. Good. Well, Ellie, how are you? You are you are here. You are uh, well known to the network, and you have uh, decided to join us for this little ramshackle endeavor. So, how are you? 
I am great, and I'm very excited. I've I've been a fan of Free League for a for a long time. Also, uh, Simon uh, Simon Stolenhag, who wrote the or have drawn the pictures. I loved him before even the play. Uh, sorry, even the game was written uh, for him. So I I remember when they made an the announcement that they would make an RPG game based on his art. Uh, so I thought that was so freaking cool. And he's also a playwright, by the way. I think I think he's now really? working for. Uh, he's done some stuff for Royal. Um, I, I think so. Maybe I should have double checked this before I started <laughs> talking out of my asshole. But you know what? Ellie is in the house. I always do this. <laughs> I fact check nothing and speak with very little confidence on things. And um, you stand by all your misinformation, which yeah, is what exactly. I respect. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but yeah, so I'm a huge fan. I'm very excited. I'm so glad you guys invited me to do this. So thank you, Matthew, and uh, whoever else decided. <laughs> that that was a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever else that was be a good idea. We <laughs> decided yeah. to throw the five of us together in a room and see what happened. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a fun experiment. No, I'm I'm and I'm excited. I uh, yeah, that's uh, I'm very excited. Well, we're Unless excited to can, have you. Thank uh, you. And that all that brings us to our other friend in the house, Anne Richmond. Hey What's going guys, on? I'm so glad to be back. Uh, it is. It's been, it hasn't actually been that long since since I led you guys through a D&D romp, dragged you through hell, uh, and uh, I'm excited to be dragged. You know, it's an honor, really, to, just to be nominated. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, thank you to whoever decided to throw us to throw us in a room together, of course. And um, I have played a lot of kind of like 80s centric RPGs and just kind of like circled around to have been orbiting tales from the loop for a really long time and mm -hmm. have watched other people played it. And I've always just been like, one day I'm going to play that game. And now here it is. And that made day it. is today. today. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, so yeah, so it's been, it's been great. I've been off, you know, uh, running, running RPGs and stuff on my channel. And it's just always a pleasure to be back here at GCP. We're, Always, always glad to have you. And it's again, you know, I, for those of you who don't know, Anne and I have got, go way back, and yeah. this has been a fun little random circle of happiness to come yeah. to meet again. I feel like we're righting a great wrong that was committed that neither of us felt that we could tell each other back in the day <laughs> of our true selves, our deepest selves, who enjoyed the fake lives of people who we are not, uh, which is strange <laughs> because that's what acting is, and yet. And yes. uh, I did not feel I could tell a soul of my secret uh, dice rolling acting life. And here we yeah. are writing this wrong today. I mean, I didn't set out to do it this way, but I feel like I live my life by a credo. And that's if it could take no effort and no time to f to get something that would make you happy. Why not take 10 years instead? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's uh, true. Life isn't that short after all. Well, speaking of short, Grant Berger. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh man! Great seg. You know, it's uh, it's great to step back into a playing chair on New Game Who This. Uh, I will say that I am eating substantially less pizza than I normally do when I'm off screen. So <laughs> again, you you win some, you lose some, but I'm really excited uh, to step into the '80s. I, I wore a period appropriate oh, uh, T-shirt tonight. Yes. I recently purchased. A uh, 200 or I think 100 or 200 episode DVD box set at Best Buy. I was at Best Buy while I dropped off my dog for a vet's appointment and it was in the same mall. And uh, I have the whole real Ghostbusters series and I've just been watching that in preparation. So Such a good show. We watched a couple of episodes of that back in the before times when we could be together in person. Well, and we had to hunt it down in on YouTube and it looked terrible. And these yeah. are still like standard definition, but they're like actual scans. And it's great to see. Oh, man. Great to see Lorenzo music. And I'm surprised Lorenzo every, music. every time Arsenio Hall speaks and it comes out. I know. It's just <laughs> I like, I, uh, man. We're, so I'm excited for coming to America coming soon. Anyway. <laughs> well, thanks, Grant. And Grant is doing double duty tonight. He's still going to be uh, on the ones and twos producing it. And he'll be back in the saddle playing the game with us all. And that leaves us with Mr. Skidmar. How are you? How are Hello. you, Skid? I'm I'm good. I'm uh, I'm drinking some Welsh whiskey that our friend John Moore sent to me, and uh, I'm drinking it out of uh, I can't I can't really see it, but as a glass with our friend Nick Shelton's face on it. So oh, I'm Nick. off to a great start. 
Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> what are you talking about the night Just is like young? kids in the 80s <laughs> used to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you remember in the 80s when we used to drink whiskey out of glasses with our friends' pictures on them? Oh, my God. Man. Wow. Just takes me nostalgia. Back. What a time. Nostalgia. <laughs> Just a glass full of nostalgia. Well, actually, oh. that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point you bring up there. Like, how, how were the 80s for you all as a decade? How'd they treat you? Uh, Later was better for me. <laughs> <laughs> Early part, not so hot. Latter part, pretty good. Yeah, I remember the Cold War, man. It was rough. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I mean, yeah, uh, I wasn't born. <laughs> I, was, I was barely there. <laughs> you weren't born in the 80s? I, actually, I was born in 88, so I oh remember. Oh my God, I'm so much years. older than you. Oh my God. Okay, so <laughs> I only had five years in the 80s, and as far as I can't remember, each one of them was a gem. Uh, because I, I don't, I was, I was between one and five years old back then. Uh, but the pictures are what I really remember. Like looking back at like, cause I was born in December. So imagine an eighties Christmas in mm. a, a room with my mom, with her short feathered hair and like the, the special eighties film grain, right? Ooh. Like it looks like there's Vaseline on the lens of every photo from back. Then. Oh Yeah. Uh, and the colors are all like super uh, concentrated. Um, and so those are kind of, obviously I don't remember cause I was just like a swaddled bean back then. Uh, but like seeing those photos of like, my dad was like this handsome guy who ran like, and like had facial hair and was like, I feel like all cool dads were like tall, lanky dads. Yeah. That's what you know? I, well, that's what I remember from the eighties pictures I've seen. There's a yeah. lot of hair going on, uh, yeah. but not as much as the seventies, but I feel like women and men, a lot more body hair. And then. yeah, for, for my mom, it was like also like corporate America. Like she was like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I'm a woman in the office, like shoulder pad, shoulder pad. Yeah. yeah. Like that's that was like a big part of those pictures, mm-hmm. um, so I, I have a lot of like, and I, and I love eighties culture in films, right? It feels a little bit like, well, I like pictures of the eighties, um, but I but I do feel like it's a very tangible period. Like there's a reason that um, this game and others tap into that sort of sensibility because it's before cell phones, right? Like mm-hmm. it's before. Like it, it, there's just enough room to expand and get into trouble, but also be home by dawn. I feel yeah. like as the specificity of like kids in the eighties. It's a yeah. good decade to set horror stuff because of like lack of cell phones, but still having like cool technology ish. Yeah, but coming. it was yeah, it was the beginning of. Uh, well, I mean, video games have been around a little bit at the end of the seventies, but like home consoles started really arriving with the NES and stuff after, you know, Atari had some stuff, but it really started Nintendo there. Like the Walkman, like a lot of Mm. portable electronics and like uh, VHS recorders and stuff got a lot more popular than people have been doing, you know, way back to eight mil, all sorts of recording on film, but things just started to get more and more accessible and there was more technology than ever, but it was still a real pain in the ass to use. (laughs) <laughs> uh, for most of the time. So I, I love it. And Matthew, I know you're running the show, but I have a homework assignment for everyone for episode two. And that mm-hmm. is, I would like everyone, if they feel comfortable, to collect their favorite picture of themselves from the 80s to show on next Ooh. week's show. <laughs> oh, it boy. is done, Grant. It <laughs> is done. I think I can do this. Okay. Yeah. I think, yeah. Well, you, I have think a whole, you have a whole week. A whole, yeah. whole week. That's true. That's true. Oh, man. Well, it can happen. The reason I ask is because the subtitle of this game that we're going to play tonight is Role Playing in the 80s That Never Was. Uh, Grant, do we have any like 80s, like 80s music we might be able to like dial up here? I think I can play a bouncy C for you. Great. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, so just to give you guys a little background on the game. Yes, uh, Tales from the originated as a narrative art book by the artist. Ellie, would you fill in for us here? What is the artist's name? Uh, Simon Stolenhag. As, yes, that fellow. Uh, and it's been adapted into this role-playing game we'll be playing here tonight, as well as a TV show, TV series that's on Amazon Prime. I don't know if anyone's watched the TV series. Uh, it's pretty cool if you want to check it out. Um, and I also want to take the opportunity to say that the lead game designer here is Niels Hintze. Mm-hmm. Close. And the editor and the project manager is Tomas Harenstam. Mm, I, sure. I apologize for that mangling. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Um, 
Ellie meter is Ooh. tweaking. It's a tweaking. I, I feel like that's, that's an itch in my eye is like, it's fine. Um, it's probably the, it's the last Swedish I'll try to pronounce this entire night. Um, so, oh, Grant, this music is hitting, hitting the spot for me. Yeah. Thank oh, yeah. you. Nailed Get it. that synth in there. <laughs> Yeah, so this game, you know, it's all of the all of those kind of movies from the '80s were that we you think of when you think of kids in the '80s, it's like ET and the Goonies a little bit, and then you know, in nostalgia terms, also Stranger Things. Uh, yeah, it's a Swedish game, but per the book, there are actually two loops, and loops are experimental particle accelerators. But we'll get to that. Uh, there's one in oh god, I forgot about this one Swedish word, the Malaren Islands in Sweden. Uh, yeah, Malone, but it's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's but then there's perfect. also one in Boulder City, Nevada, right here yeah. in the old U.S. of A. Um, and I think we put Ellie through enough torture with our terrible Swedish pronunciations. No, no. And I, ca- I honestly love this, and I, and I know no sweet. Every Swede watching this, and I'm, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a couple because I'm gonna force literally all my friends to watch this, uh, and they're gonna be like, <laughs> they said. Are, like they're speaking our language terribly, but it's still amazing, <laughs> you know. Because it's like no one speaks Swedish; it's a secret language, you are know. Those in, beautiful in... idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Just... I didn't realize your friends who are still nationals were allowed to speak with dissidents like yourself, living <laughs> in exile. That's fair. That's fair. But um, I have some of them left. Some traitors. Okay. Left. Uh, but uh, but you know that Ingrid Bergman said uh, she was like. English for work, French for romance, and Swedish for secrets. And I'm like, that's such a cool, cool way of putting it because no one speaks Swedish. <laughs> that's so cool. Wow. Yeah. I never knew Ingrid Bergman was a spy. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, kids. Uh, well, thank you for that, Ellie. I'm still sure. going to put it, we're still going to play the Boulder City Loop just to, just so we don't embarrass ourselves too much in front of your expatriate Swede friends. Uh, but uh, why don't we take a look at some of the art since this whole game is based on art. Um, Grant, there's an image from page 39 of the core rulebook, if you wouldn't mind throwing that up. And if the rest of you wouldn't mind directing your attention to roll 20, mm. you get an image of... Ooh. Can I just say, Matthew, you're so polite already. I know, I feel so gently led into yeah. this whole situation. <laughs> Matthew, are this you referring to the image of the SUV with the trooper next to it on page 39? I'm referring to the towers with the kind of uh, uh, interstate uh, uh, I have that on page 34 for me. I apologize. Oh, that might be my mistake. Um, well, this, I just want to give you a kind of look. So we're in Boulder City, Nevada, which is uh, originally the city where the people who were building the Hoover Dam uh, lived. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, in our world, it's a little different, uh, and we're going to get to that. But first, I just want to. Well, at first, I want to call out like the amazing art. So this is the kind of art that's built with, and you can't quite see the. And on the roll twenty image anyway, you can't quite see the uh, robot in the image. But we'll get to that. Um, but this book, it, I've been you know digging through it for you know about a month now, and it's just such a like a wonderful. The art in here is so great, and it's all from that one artist. And on that note, I want to take a minute to extend a big thank you to Free League, who's generously supporting the stream tonight by giving away some starter kits so that you can try this game out too, if you want to. Uh, yeah, isn't that exciting? That's that cool. is exciting. Tonight, we're giving away one hard copy of the Tales from Loop starter kit and three digital copies. And you know, I've, I've been digging into it. I think this game's super fun. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this group especially. Uh, but, you know, if you guys want want to play, here's your chance. So uh, pay attention to the chat. Uh, Brennan's going to post a link in there throughout the, uh, throughout the evening and you just click on that and that will lead you to an, an entry form for the giveaway. And we'll announce the winners by the end of the night in the chat. And if you win the physical copy, Brennan will reach out to you directly. Um... Yeah, so that's exciting. So why don't we dive into the world of the game? We got into a little bit of it, but to give you guys a sense of what's going on. So uh, we're going to eventually walk through character creation and then dive into a mystery, which is what scenarios and Tales from Loop are called. Uh, But first, I want to talk a little bit about the world because and how it functions. So it's the 80s, uh, the late 80s, as we discovered late late last night in the Coral Book. Skid uh, texted me to correct me. Uh, 
and I had a whole plan where I was going to set it in the year where that Skid's character would be the same age that Skid was in real life and it would be all loopy and time travel-y and, and it's just the late 80s. Um, <laughs> so, but to give you a sense of the world, uh, I'm sorry, what you'll be doing is you're going to be playing kids uh, between the ages of 10 and 15. Uh, but there are certain principles of the world those kids are living in that the, they're outlined in the old core rule book that I feel like we should go through. Uh, so, principle number one. Your hometown is full of strange and fantastic things. So in this alternate universe that we're living in, we're in the US, we're in the Cold War, all of that's true, but fusion particle accelerators and what's called the magnetrine effect were discovered in the 50s and it broke down the boundaries of what was possible and impossible. And in this world, huge transport vessels fly and cyborgs and robots can think and scientists create time portals and objects that replace people's identities and strange beasts are roaming the landscape and humanity can contact people and creatures from other times and places. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down. Uh, to talk a little bit about the, the magnetrine effect, I'll direct you to roll 20 once more. And Grant, this is the image from page 32. Um, so Ooh. this is, if you see here, this is a, a kind of a vehicle at the center here. It's an ad for a magnetrine vehicle. And you'll see these plates at the bottom uh, here. And what they do is they use the magnetic, the natural magnetic fields of the earth to fly basically. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a standard feature of the world. Uh, and it's been around again since the fifties. Uh, so this is not, this is pretty old hat for you guys. And you see this kind of thing all the time. Uh, and then there's another thing I'm pretty excited about and grant, this will be the image from page, uh, 173. <gasps> oh, cool. Wait, I want to ride it. So, yeah. Big hello, robots. Hello, new friend. Changing my character. God. Uh, I actually, and I can tell you the name of this robot. It doesn't have like a name name. I can tell you the make and model. This is the Iwasaka SBR-71. Yo. Mm. Originally Little. constructed for the Japanese self-defense forces, but then adapted for civilian use in the mid-1970s. Hey, baby. Look at his little chicken feet. <laughs> I I mean, Anne and I are so different in this. I'm terrified of these things. I'm like, <laughs> well, you I'm don't like, think there's you 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 just are more aware of the possibility that the machines could be self-aware, become self-aware, and take over the world. Yeah, that or and that they look like T-Rexes. We're gonna die, guys. But it's yeah, fine. But, but what if it's a Gundam, Ellie? A, a <laughs> well, it could be that. I guess, okay, <laughs> I'll be the pessimist, you'll be the optimist. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be our dynamic, and the boys okay. can do their thing between each other. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I can't wait to see who's the pessimist and who's the optimist between <laughs> Scant. Grin. I almost called you Grint and Scant. <laughs> Skid and Grant. Um, Rupert Grant. I've heard it both and, ways. <laughs> yeah. So... Here, I wanna, I'm throwing up a map of Boulder City. Uh, Grant, if you want to throw that up for the, the stream as well. Uh, so, cool. the loop was for formed under the auspices of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, in the 50s. And Eisenhower himself ordered the creation of DART, which is the Department of Advanced Research and Teleportation. Mm -hmm. Um, so, the loop itself is a particle generator, and you can see it here, that's the circle kind of running around through Lake Mead and through Boulder City, and if you notice, it even touches the Hoover Dam. Uh, and most everyone in the city actually probably lives within the root loop, though they're probably entirely unaware of that. And many of the town's residents are employed by DART, but the facilities are top secret military installations, so everyone is pretty much sworn to secrecy. And the kids that you'll be playing really has no idea, they, even though robots are around and they have flying magnetic transports, you don't really know what your parents are up to. And not infrequently, things are created because of experiments that go wrong, or random events that spawn something new or unexpected. Which brings us... It, sorry, go ahead. It might be worth pointing out that the the timeline of the Tales from the Loop universe split from our timeline in like 1944, so like right at the end of World War mm -hmm. II. Mm. The Soviets created were the first to discover this technology, but too late for it to affect the war. But mm. then from that point, it became a thing in the world. So up to 1944, everything's the same. 
After 1944, everything's different. Exactly. Cool. Thank you, Skill. Cool, cool, cool. Um, well, let's let's move on to principle number two, which is this, which is that despite the fact that there are these robots and flying machines and all kinds of crazy shit happening in this world, your everyday life is dull and unforgiving. Which I feel is a great principle for a role playing game. Yeah. Uh, I'll dig they, deep to experience that <laughs> sensation. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you still have to go to school. You still got homework. You still got to run from your bullies and deal with your parents being lame or your older siblings or the fact that you don't have any money to buy that latest Talking Heads tape or whatever. And, and your kids. And uh, it says here right in the book, life is full of setbacks and obstacles. The adults decide and do as they please. And kids are forced to do as they say. And that's life. So let me let me ask you a question. Um, shoot. So in this kind of like comparison between all these advances and this doldrum life that we have, is it like, you know, normal, dull teenage life, but when we get on the bus, it's a flying bus? Great question. Uh, no. So there are still traditional vehicles that run on, you know, mm-hmm. gas and diesel with wheels on the ground. Um, it's, it is not cheap. It, like, even though it's commonplace, it's not particularly cheap to have magnetrine yeah. effects. So you should utilize the magnetrine effect. So, you, it wouldn't be out of place for you to see it all around you, but you also, like, you wouldn't have a flying car. Right. So, and, oh, go, uh, sorry, Ellie, go ahead. I was just wondering up. if Boulder City exists. It for does. You. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it's like southeast of Vegas. It's like okay. a 40, so you could like probably a see drive, the right? halo of Vegas from, from your house at night. Uh. Okay, and sorry, Lake, Lake Mead is well, is real too. We, we're having, mm-hmm. I feel like somebody in our group has been was talking about being at Lake Mead. Was it one of you guys? It wasn't me. I've never been to Vegas or anything. I've never it been might to Vegas. Be Troy. It might have been yeah, Troy. Yeah, uh, I want to go. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Anne, you were you had a second question. Uh, yeah, I guess my um, as I as I think about my dull teen life uh, and think about how it relates to these art pieces that we're seeing and the fact that this is normal. What are the contexts upon which it, are these like things that are only in facilities that are just near to where we are, so we only see them through fences? Or how often, when you talk about how normal this is, would we in what context would we see them? I think like the best kind of comparison would be like how often you see major equipment. So if like if you were to like see a major. Tank. A tank, but also like farm equipment or like a, sure. a crane or a crane. You know, okay. s- stuff like that. that. Really, that's helpful to keep in mind. Thank you. Yeah, because it's, it's not like you're like riding in style. Like you, there are like luxury transports that use mm-hmm. magnetrine to circle the world, but they still have airplanes. And you probably right. would take an airplane, and you don't. Yeah, like I said, you don't have a flying car. It's yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But they're part of the fabric of the world. Yeah. Okay, cool. 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 Helpful. Um, Thank you. Of course. Uh, so then, principle number th- uh, principle number three is that, and this is important, an important one, that adults are out of reach and out of touch. You know, <laughs> parents. They just they don't just, understand. They just don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand. They just don't. <laughs> they just don't. <laughs> don't get and, it. And you know, the, in in this world, you know, they're they're off in their own universe, right? Distinct from the kids, and there's no point in asking them for help with problems because they're just gonna ignore you because they've got their own shit going on. They nag and whine and argue with each other. And you, what's different for you guys is that unlike perhaps one of us, though, I I, I don't want to assume, like you're not dealing with the kind of trouble that the kids are gonna get into in this this game. Uh, <laughs> But, robot yeah. trouble, Ellie. Robot yeah. trouble. Robot yeah. trouble. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, sometimes adults can help, and there are adults you'll, you trust, but mostly you're on your own. Uh, mm-hmm. Which brings us to principle number four, which is an interesting one, that the land of loop is dangerous, yes, but kids will not die. So that is a kind of bedrock principle of the game, a ground rule, if you were, that like the none of your characters are going to die. Now, I will say, terrible things can happen in this world, and terrible things can happen to your character, but just as a like a kind of like base level thing you're you're all gonna make it i have an add to that if if you want to play this game but you want to die uh there's tales from the flood that where they add death things from the there's a things from the flood i think things from the flood sorry yes uh, that is the that's the adult like the adult sister game of tales from the loop right mm-hmm. uh yeah i haven't played it so i, I just i <laughs> when someone sent me this game uh, and there, and I was like, oh, cool! I'll GM it or whatever, and I'll, you know, and and 
people who have played with me knows that I want to murder everyone. Yep, uh, that's true. And so, and then, found, yeah, and, so, and then I found out that you can't. And I was like, what the, f- what the fuck, you know? Uh, but then they were like, so here's things from the flood. <laughs> so, but I haven't read it yet, so I don't know if, if it's how adult it is, so to speak. But, um, but I think it's still, like, all I know is that it includes a death mechanism for, I'm assuming, the children. Um, but it's kind of interesting. It's good to note that you <laughs> won't be able to kill. You got us. options. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you got it's on the table in that dis- in that game. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. I don't know where to go from there. Uh, <laughs> also, I'll just segue into principle number yeah, five. I love how. Can we just pause? Because I feel like Matthew was like. What's great about this is I want you all to feel comfortable in the fact that there's no harm to children in this game. If that's a you know line or a veil for you, it's not a thing. And Ellie's like, but if you were okay with it and you did want to murder children, I just want to play devil's advocate and say I gently offer you this opportunity to kill I, and murder children. I think Ellie like, Ellie has uh, cleared up why it's so important that we have Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent because anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. And I, I think know. she's self-incriminated herself several times over. She's wanted in Boulder <laughs> City right now. Yeah, yeah. So I feel it. I feel it. Oh, man. So I didn't true. even know it was called Miranda Rights. I should start looking that up. I should be more quiet in general. About they will tell you. Who's Miranda? Who exactly. Who is, is it Miranda from Sex and the yeah, City? Exactly. <laughs> it's coming back yeah, exactly. soon. <laughs> oh, you no. You have the right to be Miranda. feisty. And, uh, <laughs> Have a, lot, feisty. a lot of mimosas at lunch, at brunch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. Continue, no. Matthew. I'm so yeah. sorry. What about well, number five, Matthew? What yes. about it? <laughs> to move on from Ellie killing children to number five, uh, this game is played scene by scene. <laughs> so oh, nice. this shouldn't be too different for anything you guys are familiar with, especially the way I know that we all play the game is that Tales from Loop takes that mechanic, that kind of improv scene mechanic and from other tabletop RPGs and kind of formalizes it. Um, so throughout the game, like there will be scenes that I set, but there are also scenes that you guys set and you guys have agency in saying, I want a scene. I'd like to do a scene and I want it to be, you know, in my house with my dad or something, or I want to talk to this teacher and I'd be like, great. And then we role play the scene together. Um, which brings me to principle number six, which is that the world is described collaboratively. So again, mm. nothing you guys haven't done before, but for example, I might say, does anyone have a scene? And one of you might say, yeah, uh, I want to confront my father about the affair he's been having with his secretary. And I'll, yeah. be, and I'll say, yeah, great. Where are you? And what do you say? And then the two of us will play the scene together. So it's not like we're scripting things, but you guys do have agency and be like, I want my, the story to go in this direction. And I might take it and twist it and because of the, the mystery, but like that is a, a principle of this game. Matthew, following up mm-hmm. on that last scene, are these supposed to be autobiographical? Are these supposed to be ripped from my childhood? Yeah. Like you just said, <laughs> the affair my dad had with it. No, I'm just kidding. Oh no, <laughs> okay. oh no. We're gonna exactly. learn so much about people's wow. <laughs> real yeah. life. How did you know? What prophecies <laughs> do you hold, book? <laughs> We're gonna exercise some demons tonight, people. Gonna have. Uh, um, I should also say, like in um, th- I, throughout the book, there's in, like the kind of like give you a sense of the '80s for those of us who haven't lived through them. Uh, there are like these little listicles about like. Uh, you know, little boxes to give us some cultural perspective of the era, like 10 popular movies from the 80s or 10 popular TV shows uh, and music mm. videos. And then I saw this one, Skid, and I just couldn't resist telling you about it. But there are the top, the 10 tabletop RPGs from the 80s. Oh. And I, want, I just wanted to see how many of these you play, you'd played. Okay. So I'm going to run through them. Now, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which technically is in the 80s, but I know you played that one. Obviously. Uh, Rollmaster. Yeah, Role Master. Yeah. Top Secret. Love Top Secret. I have a new updated box copy over behind me. Uh, Call of Cthulhu. You no, know, I've never played Call of Cthulhu. Okay. Uh, no. Champions. I've never heard of that one. Oh, Champions is my favorite superhero role playing system. The character creation is awesome, but the actual gameplay mechanics are terrible. But. <laughs> it's still really fun. So creating characters is about as far as Next you want to go. Next game, and, champions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. DM'd coming, by Skid. Coming soon to new game. We have, to play a, we have to play a superhero game. Oh, yeah. All right, it else? would be so fun. I, I would love to. Uh, Masks is awesome if you're looking for one. Masks. Okay. Check it out. 
Um, we've also got Gangbusters. Loved Gangbusters. That's another <laughs> TSR product. It uh, takes place in the the Prohibition, and you can play either uh, bootleggers, gangsters, or cops. And I think I told a story on the show. Like I had a, I was running a campaign where I was I was in a campaign where my character was an FBI agent, and up to that in in the 1920s. FBI agents weren't allowed to carry firearms. And so his whole thing was like, he went, he took it to Congress. So he was like trying to lobby to allow federal agents to carry sidearms. You have told that story. I love that story. Um, <laughs> what else we got? Star Frontiers. Love Star Frontiers. That was TSR's first foray into sci-fi. Not a great universe. It wasn't an awesome setting, to be honest, but the art was a lot of Larry Elmore art, the very co- famous cover of the book. Uh, Larry Elmore is great, but not a, not a huge fan of the of the world, but I love sci-fi gaming. Didn't we meet Larry Elmore? Didn't you meet Larry Elmore? I did. I met him a couple times. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> all right, three more. Chill. Oh, uh, I've never played it. That's a horror-themed one, right? I have no idea. I think it is, yeah. I, I didn't do any research on any of these games because I assumed you'd play them all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's about relaxing, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's it's about just like, it's just can we play out. that? I'm very <laughs> tense. It's, like the, it's, it's what the people did before Netflix and chill. Right. Yeah. It was oh. just chill. Just That's why chill. there were so many more children. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Uh, oh. Pendragon. Pendragon is another fantasy system, but I never played it. Uh, and then the final one is, of course, Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. which fans of New Game Who Dis know all about. And now yeah. we're in a time loop that involves New Game Who This. Go, go yeah. check the VODs it's to see Skid play that. <laughs> it's like right. red string theory, uh, GCP theories. Yeah, oh, everything's <laughs> all connected. So what do you say? You want to jump into some character creation for Tales from yeah. Oh, I I'm can't ready. wait. I cannot wait. Oh my also, God. the rhythm, I regret to tell you, has got me. This music yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. is gripping me. And I'm trying not to rock out, but no promises. You know, Gloria Estefan <laughs> warned you. <laughs> I she know. said she it said was going rhythm, to get you. It's going to get you. And I was like, nah, not me. Yeah, oh, you're all like, no, not me. Like, she could be referring to me. Like, I'm surely above this effect. But. Yeah. Did you guys hear no, that? Do- got me. That dope Castilian lisp skid through into Ethafan. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, dope let's get on lisp. our feet and Ooh. into character creation. Okay. <laughs> amazing. I'm done. I'm done. I love it. Okay, so like I said, you'll all be playing kids somewhere in the 10 to 15 age range, and that's actually going to have mechanical effects, but let's walk through this step by step. Uh, So, uh, first things first, we're going to choose your type, and that's effectively your class. So, uh, there are eight types in the game. They're kind of archetype, archetypal ideas uh, of kids from the 80s. Uh, they're on, they start on page 50 of the core rulebook if you want to follow along. Uh, so, does anyone want to read them off? Does anyone, does anyone have the core rulebook up? I if have. Not, you got but it, Ali? But I have an, I'm Swedish and have a slight accent, so I don't know if people enjoy that. <laughs> I but, think that uh, makes it all the better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Take us on uh, a ride, Ellie. So what are, what book, are the types? Oh, all of them. Bookworm, computer geek, hick, uh, jock. A popular kid, rocker, and troublemaker, weirdo, and that was the last one. Weirdo was the last one. Great. So um, I give you guys, you know, you guys have had, had a little time to look at this chapter. Have you got, you guys have an idea what type you're going to play? I do. Mm-hmm. What do you think mm-hmm. it's good? I, th- I think I'm going to be the jock. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. Amazing. True to form. No. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Just really this. my own uh, a- athletically successful childhood. Okay, exactly. 80s skid was a jock. Total jock. Wow. Uh, Love it. Great. What about the rest of you? What are you thinking? I mean, the rhythm got me. And the I think I'm going to have to be a rocker. Oh. A punk rocker. Can we talk about how great these descriptions are, though? Uh, it's on screen for everyone to see. It was a worn cassette tape that changed your life. <laughs> when that song had finished playing, you had found a home. That is it right there, and you are getting it's lost perfect. in this rhythm. Oh, I love it. 
Um, uh, I um, I decided to be a bookworm. Oh yeah! Bookworm. All right, it's good to ha- it's good to have a bookworm because you yeah, guys are need to figure some things out. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Unfortunately, uh, played by me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. There are dice rolls to help us. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> all, right. God. all right. And Grant, what you thinking? You know, I'm drawn to a couple. I'm drawn to Computer Geek, uh, which has got, I kind of had a similar haircut to the Computer Geek in the book, which I'll throw up right now. Uh, it's a bit more bullish than mine. I'm thinking Computer Geek, but I'm also um, <laughs> also drawn to the Troublemaker, I got to say. Mm. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I'm kind of... I'm kind of I'm kind of so prone to peer pressure, just like I was as a child. I kind of want like a group vote or Matthew to tell me what to play, just to have fun with the system. What do you think would be the most fun, Matthew? Uh, let's do a group vote. Ooh. I don't want to tip my hand, as it were. Uh, so there's there's the remaining ones are Computer Geek, Hick, Troublemaker, Popular Kid. I don't know if I can do that. That's too much of a stretch. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, weirdo. I, I also like Weirdo. Um, weirdo. Yeah. Weirdo yeah. is the Alley CD from Breakfast yeah. Club. Yes. Uh, character. Yeah, I'm trying to think of... I had to look for the description at Hick, because I was like, what is a Hick? And then I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, well, there's yeah. there's a couple ways to slice this orange. That's a new thing that people are saying. All the kids are saying it. They're not. Uh, <laughs> but uh, each one of these archetypes has key skills. So should we maybe think about what key skills we have and don't have before we guide Grant into yeah, I think incredible it's really incredible experience? Really smart. Um, I think it's, well, that's why you brought me here. It, it makes sense for all of y'all to talk about your key skills, and I'll look over the rest while you do. Sure. Yep. Well, okay. Ellie, why don't you start? Uh, well, my key skills skills are calculate, investigate, comprehend, um, which I realize now might not fit my backstory, but that's fine. Uh, Do, well, I wouldn't worry about it because those the skills are kind of. We'll get to skills, but they're kind of widely they're applicable. There's a bunch of yeah. stuff you can do with each one. There's only twelve skills in this game, so they have kind of broad applications. And if it, and if you think it's too uh, like if you when you hear my backstory, you think it like doesn't fit. I could also be a weirdo. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> we all to, could also be a weirdo. That's else. a stretch, Ellie. Yeah, I uh, know. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> um, cool. And what what are the rocker's key skills? The rocker. Wow. Um, nope. She's not going to talk like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, she has key <laughs> skills of move, charm, and empathize. I was going to say she's been smoking she, since she was five. <laughs> it's like lost her voice <laughs> immediately. Um, nah. Uh, right. Nah. So no overlap so far. And uh, yeah. Skid, what are the jock's key skills? Jock's key skills are force, move, and contact. Nice. So a little bit of overlap on move, but that's a pretty that's, useful generic yeah. skill. So, so I think a backup for someone, you know, smarty pants, uh, computer nerd. We don't have anybody who's got like tech. You know what I mean? Yeah. So computer Seems like that's nerd. Important. And we also are talking about like what we love about the 80s. And we brought up like computer games and tech. So if we want to like involve some more of that. Uh, in our storytelling, you know, could be a fun yeah. play. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, I think uh, Computer Geek and Bookworm do um, do overlap a little bit, but you have Program and I have Investigate, which could yeah. be like the means that we could be a team, Grant. Yeah. If, you, if, yeah. you're, if your kid wants to have friends. And you get my- more <laughs> skills than, you get more skills than just your key skills. Uh, yeah. But your key skills, obviously, you get more bonuses. I also uh, very much enjoy the fact that the uh, computer geek has a pocket calculator and a toy lightsaber at his disposal. (laughs) There is also, you know, the option that you are just like the most popular girl in school. You know, like super popular. I love it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty Uh, great. Because that would give us contact and lead, which are skills, key skills neither of us None mm-hmm. of us have yet. Do you guys think it would be too on the nose to play Heather? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, I think that's... I might be Heather, the popular kid. I think oh, that's... I love it. I, th- I don't think it's a stretch. I think it's amazing. Yeah, that's I, great. I think it's time to go to the salon in my father's Cadillac DeVille. Oh, God, I can't <laughs> wait for Skid, the jock, and Heather, the oh popular kid. Oh, my God. Kid. 
are gonna interact. You know they gonna... dated. You oh know they God. dated at <laughs> one point. <laughs> Something happened. I don't oh like God, that jock anymore because he called me a skank in front of all my friends. Oh, no. <laughs> oh man. Well, I did not. I never said that. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe you should stop Taylor being said such that a I said that. I never no. said it. Whatever. <laughs> Gag me with a spoon. I'm oh. so excited for what's going to happen great. in this game. Um, <laughs> okay. So we've got a popular kid, a jock, a bookworm, and a rocker. Yeah. It's a yeah. pretty fun party. Oh, All right. man. I'm just uh, going to be uh, Keanu Reeves from Cyberpunk. So, again, the streams are going to cross here. No. <laughs> I got I to gotta say, like, it's so interesting because the jock in this movie would probably at first have a crush on the popular kid, but would then either find the inner beauty inside the rocker or the, the bookworm at some point. Mm, and then listen. one of those other two would date someone outside of the circle. And the popular kid would just like have something terrible happen to them, I'm sure. So Don't you forget about, forget about me. me. <laughs> I'll be alone dancing in the room. <laughs> All right. So now what we have to decide on is how old you each are. So you can choose anywhere from ten to fifteen. Uh, your age affects your attribute sc scores, which are your ability scores, and the number of luck points you get. So older kids get higher attribute scores, but the younger kids get more luck points. Um, but it and can, how does can, luck function? Like, uh, what is mechanically, what does it do? Luck function. So you get a certain number of luck points a day, depending on your age. Uh, and if you fail a dice roll, you can spend a luck point to try again. And they replenish between sessions, so they can be really useful because uh, you'll you'll see they're like they're you're not going to roll dice quite as much as you do in say mm -hmm. a Pathfinder game. You're going to either those moments when you get into trouble or when you need to roll the dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but it can also just be how you see the character. Like if your character is 15, then your character's 15. Like, and that's you can build from that way too. Yeah, my character's 15. That's all I know. All right. That's literally it. I have nothing to, nothing else to say on the, on the topic. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, what, so uh, what are you thinking, Ellie? How old is your bookworm going to be? My character is 10. 10. Oh, ten. Wow. wow. That's, a, that's a huge gap when you're a teenager. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, yeah. Skid, how old is your jock? I think 14. 14. And Grant, how, what about your? What about Heather? How old is Heather? Heather's fifteen, and she has a learner's permit. And her dad lets her borrow the car <laughs> whenever she wants to go get ice cream and head up to the mall. It's really great. There's uh, something that I feel like we need to include, and you can say no. Just go with this. But I feel like we were friends in middle school, but we ain't friends no more. Absolutely, oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah, you got. Heather is spreading weird rumors, maybe about yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The rocker. She is like, just like Mean Girls. She yeah. is so weird, guys. I don't even yeah. know what she does in the band room after school. I it's hear. Sure. Yeah. I hear that she's practicing kissing on her hand by herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That's disgusting. <laughs> okay. I'm this, <laughs> okay, this I'm, I don't want to quash this because this is actually a part of character creation yeah. when you guys decide your relationships to one another. Yeah. Okay, but, okay, yeah. okay, sure. Sorry. I, well, like, I was I just, I, I was just scared. playing, uh, I was just playing an extra to to Grant's little uh, girl game, uh, girl <laughs> gang there. You mean girls game. I, my character is not sitting there being like, oh, really. Um, <laughs> my character is not even there. Your character's in the corner reading a book and she yeah, hears exactly. the whole conversation, but when she hears something nasty, she just adjusts her glasses and turns away yeah. a little bit. Yeah. It's perfect. Well, speaking of, um, my character's actually a boy, so. Oh. Yeah. A boy right. worm. A boy worm. A boy <laughs> worm. <laughs> it's just, he's just a worm with glasses. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, so cute. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden we bring in other uh, species and... <laughs> Things. <laughs> you said yeah, things that, got how weird, weird here, Matthew. Get? How weird. Yeah. I mean, there's time yet. It get yet. pretty weird. Yeah. An actual worm. There's <laughs> time to become a worm yet, child. <laughs> um, why don't we do attributes? Okay. So these are your basically your ability scores. So uh, let's just run, I'll just run through them for you. So body is the ability to jump high, run fast, fight, sneak, and climb. Uh, tech is the ability to understand machines and robots and program technological things, open locked doors and build things. Uh, heart 
is the ability to make friends, lie, know the right people, create a good atmosphere and persuade others. Uh, and mind is the ability to find weak points, understand people, situations and creatures, solve riddles, understand clues and like kind of have the night right knowledge at the right time. Um, so these, you actually don't pick these, your age is the number, well you do, so, so let me take it back. Your age equals the number of points you have to spend. So if yeah. you're 12, you have 12 points to distribute. If you're 15, you have 15 points to distribute. Uh, so no starting score can be higher than five in any attribute, and you must have at least one in each attribute. Okay. And you'll notice that skills are linked to attribute. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, flipping, I'm gonna flip ahead in my book here. So like calculate is a tech skill. So um, that's just something to be aware of. Cool, cool, um, cool. So, you, so that, uh, so, so sorry, just to, so attributes are body, tech, heart, mind, and then the skills, uh, just to, because I'm dumb. Uh, I don't know. I have three, I have, so I am 10, so I have 10 points to uh, divide into the attributes, and do I get then extra points for the skills? Yeah, and skills are voted. skills are separate, separate, so we'll do those. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah. So how did you cool. how did you divide your skills? You don't need to tell me all the numbers. That's not, that's boring. But if you like, what you what's what's your uh, your key stat and what's your dump stat? Let's do, let's go that way. Okay. Um, my key stat for now, just because I know my backstory is gonna be mind, and then my other key stat is gonna be body. Like I'm I'm good at sneaking is what I'm thinking, and I'm gonna be good at uh, investigate and comprehend uh, for mind. And then my shitty stats are gonna be tech and heart. Great. All right. So the 10-year-old bookworm is not tuned into matters of the heart, is what you're telling me? <laughs> He's not <laughs> no, emotionally I'm, empath empathetic. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, like, because it's like heart is like contact, charm, and lead, which is three right. things he probably cannot do, but but he could because of his... Uh, because of his... He's been reading so much. Uh, he is good at, like, comprehending and empathizing uh, with other people and, like, tr like, trying to build a story around other people. Uh, but I think he's way too young to to have like a charming, like being able to charm people or manipulate people um, in that way. So it's basically what I I put it down in based on the skills more than the more than the, the attributes. So to speak. Great. Uh, and what do you got? What are your What are your? Oh uh, man! Oh man! I'm doing math here, Matthew. Um, <laughs> he caught me doing math. Um, so I'm thinking of leaning more into heart and tech. I imagine that as uh, a rocker, she's got to set up amps and maybe does like AV club type stuff too. Um, and so I think that's probably going to be her main stuff with like a backup body, just a backup because I have 15 whole points to spend. It's true. So it's, um, you'll love the way you look. I guarantee it <laughs> uh, is what I'm saying. So yeah, so I, those are, it's heart and tech are mainline kind of what she's going to do, but I think she's she's got that, lead charm contact game on fleek nice. uh you know is where i think i'm gonna go with my with my heart uh but yeah i think that makes sense for the group we have too with balance and stuff great uh skid what you got what you thinking uh i've got five body i think he's he really is like a good athlete he's like three inches taller than the average kid he's <laughs> Kind of a uh, strong, kind of lanky, but you know, he's a good athlete. And then heart is my other good stat, and then mind and tech kind of dumped. Great. And and Grant, what about uh, what about old Heather? Heather's had the benefit of listening to everyone else give their stupid stats first, and <laughs> she's been able to do all the math necessary. Uh, and I know you said that was boring, but I think it'll nicely break it down. Uh, heart is the main stat at five. Body and mind are at four. Uh, is it Heather? Is that your main stat? Heart? Well, yes, but it's an evil heart. So, Ooh. Uh, and tech is two. I think Heather, by the time Facebook came around, was like really late to understand it and didn't have to... <laughs> Didn't understand how to use a computer until her first divorce. I'm I'm going to the future, but she needed to she needed to learn how to use yeah. it when she got on Match.com. But not yeah, before. that's the oh, thing. I love this. Something you have to understand about the '80s is if you were cool, you thought tech and computers were weird and stupid, and anyone yeah. who liked them was weird and crazy. So yeah, that makes total sense. Little did they know about Silicon Valley back then. 
Yep. Yes. Well, actually, Grant, you just hit upon like one of my favorite things about any movie that's in like a recent period is when you, mm-hmm. you then like you, there's always a moment in that story when you realize how old, how old the characters would be today, and you're like, and you suddenly yeah. place them in a different, like you see them in a completely yeah. different way. Yeah. Well, that's why. I know, I, yeah. That's why I absolutely adore uh, Cobra Kai and seeing William Zabka play <laughs> that character out, that kind of bully, misunderstood yeah. jock, and like he's rough on his, uh, he's on his ass, kind of. He, he lives in a in a not so great apartment. He's estranged from his son. His business is in a wreck. And like throughout the first two seasons, he barely learns how to use Facebook. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah, they're in their forties now. All of them, it's, I think. Yeah, so if we were uh, Machio is sixty. Machio sixty. No, no, sorry, I meant I meant oh. our characters. Okay, uh, got it, got it, got it. Sorry. I was like, Jesus, are yeah. they sixty really? Because let's say it's like eighty-eight, right? So if you're fifteen, you would have been born in seventy-three. So you're, gosh, yeah, forty-seven. Yeah. Forty-seven. So forty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Skid. What are you? Are we? Do, that was everybody. Everybody gave me their attributes. Yep. Amazing. All right. So let's move on to luck points. So, like I said, luck points are you can use them to re-roll uh, a dice roll uh, when you fail, and they replenish between sessions. And so, luck points equal fifteen minus your age. So, if you're fifteen, you ain't got any luck points. That's fascinating. Life is hard. <laughs> and if and I'm dull. ten. So if I'm ten, I have five. You have max mm-hmm. max luck points. Oh, I'm yeah. a little I'm a little hobbit or like a yeah. gnome. Like a <laughs> yeah, a hobbit. Yeah, yeah, you're lucky like a hobbit. The yeah, well, amount that you were charmed by your own amount of like mechanic luck was yeah. ten out of ten. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, you think about watching like a if you're ever around kids and you're not used to being around kids, you'll see a kid run a full speed into a wall, fall over, and get back up. It reminds yeah. me of that. And like, if I did that, I would be in a in a cast for weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've thought I've thought about that actually with you, Grant. Uh, like, I don't know if I've ever told you. I think if... about you smashing into walls. <laughs> no. Fantasize about it. Hour exactly. After hour, Every day. No, but there. like Dreaming between of you it. And, between you and me, I'm five foot and you're six foot four. Uh-huh. Uh, if I fall over, everyone's like, "Oh, Ellie, that's so cute." If you fall over, it's a building falling over, <laughs> and it's yeah. like everyone's like, "Watch out, nuclear blast!" And uh, <laughs> because it's so much collateral damage. <laughs> Ellie, you just gotta get ready if you ever see me fall down slowly to go timber. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I love it. Uh, Can I get a all... flag on that play? <laughs> 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 Um, oh, man. amazing. Great. Okay. So that's luck. And now we move on to skills. So okay. everyone gets 10 points to distribute amongst the various skills. Uh, and each of your types, as you guys so uh, astutely noticed, have three connected skills. And in those skills, you can put up to three points. Mm. In everything else, you, a starting skill level of one is your max. Okay. So I feel like it might be helpful for, for me, but also... Those of you out there in the dark, if we understood baseline, what purview each of these skills has, like what Correct. kind of checks are they going to be involved in? So, yeah, that is a great idea. So let's do that. So, like I said, there's only 12 of them. Uh, and so they cover a broad line of areas. And the way a skill or, 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 tr- or dice roll works in the game, if you ever need to make a check or if you ever encounter trouble, capital T, trouble, you basically uh, build a dice pool of D6s equal to your relevant attribute score plus your relevant skill store. Skill score. And then you roll, and every six you roll is a success. And depending on how difficult the task is, it may require a different number of successes. Uh, so, like in every day, you know, something that's fairly easy might only require one success, but something that's more difficult might require two or three. Um, and But if you roll bonus successes, so if you only need one, but you rolled three, you have two, uh, two extra successes that you can use to buy effects. And those are specific to each skill. So I'll run through them all in a minute. But for example, if you're using Tinker to build something, um, you know, you can, if you roll those extra extra successes, mm-hmm. maybe that item you build is more durable than you expected and it gives you an additional bonus uh, when you use it. Right. Or if you're using Tinker to manipulate, you know, you're going to pick a lock and you get an extra success and you can use that, that extra mm-hmm. success to buy the bonus of showing off. You know, if you're trying to impress Heather, for example. Um, just to name a completely random example. Uh, but yeah, why don't we run through the skills and while you guys are working on them and then we'll come back to them. I'm um, done. So the body wow. skills. I'm done. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
Okay, bookworm, calm yeah. down. <laughs> Sir. All right. Oh, but, yep. But, so, yeah. well, Ellie, you can check your work while the others keep using yeah. their allotted time. <laughs> I'm realizing Matthew is going to be the teacher, the, the elementary school teacher <laughs> in this, the game. It's like, well, Ellie, you can help the others now if you want. <laughs> yeah. So um, the body skills are sneak, which is the ability to you know hide, sneak, steal stuff. Uh, force is the the skill you use for like hand to hand combat, but also to move heavy things and kind of endure physically stressful situations. Uh, move is the ability to climb, run, balance, chase someone, run away from someone, that kind of thing. Uh, so those are the body skills. The tech skills are tinker, program, and calculate. So Tinker is uh, the ability to build and manipulate machines and other mechanical items. So you can use it, the tink, uh, the, the kind of, the build, there, you know, if you look at the skill, there's a build subhead and a, and a manipulate subhead. So like those are pretty self-explanatory. If you want to build something versus kind of mm, work with something that already exists. Uh, program is the ability to create and manipulate computer programs and electronic devices. So you'd use this to build a computer or build a ham radio or, the, or hack a computer or whatever you're going to use, depending if you're using build or manipulate. Uh, calculate is the skill that allows you to know how technical objects work and how to use them. So you're going to encounter spoilers, uh, you know, robots, machines, magnetrine ships, cyborgs, an alarm clock, any of these things. And calculate is will allow you to know, like, how does this work? What's its purpose? Can I use it? Can I build it? Uh, you know, all that stuff like that. The heart skills are contact, charm, and lead. Contact is a, is a funky one. It's actually kind of like, it's, um, it's like knowing who to talk to about certain things. Um, right. So if you're in trouble, you know, and you can roll to find out who you should go to, who might help be able to help so you. So it's, it's kind of like an investigate, but like related to who's in your Rolodex. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's like you know, you know, you know who actually might be really helpful with this. Like the gym teacher might know, mm -hmm. like that, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. Thing. Um, charm is pretty self-explanatory. Like the ability to charm people, lie to them, befriend them, get them on your side, get them to do what you want. Uh, and lead is the ability to help your friends work together. So this actually has mechanical effects too. Um, so if you you know, if you're working with everybody and you encounter trouble, you can choose to try to lead the other kids and inspire them, maybe. Right. Um, and you can basically give them bonus dice to the other kids for their roles uh, if you succeed, which is a pretty, pretty valuable skill. So let me uh, ask you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, you know what? I'll wait till you're done with this, and then I'm going to ask you a question right. when you're done going through all of them. I'm happy to take questions whenever you want to. Yeah, I just want, I want it to be like its own section, and then I'll be like, advanced questionnaire featuring <laughs> Ann Richmond. I get you. <laughs> uh, so the mind skills are investigate, comprehend, and empathize. So investigate is finding clues, hidden objects, figuring out puzzles, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Comprehend is um, it's kind of like a knowledge check in Pathfinder. It's like the ability to have the information or know where to find the information in the library or the ARPANET or whatever it is you're going to use. Uh, and empathize is kind of um, the ability to know what makes a person tick uh, mm -hmm. and also to find their weaknesses. So that can be a person, sense motive. Yeah, it's just like sense motive. Um, it's also it also like it's a little more powerful too because like you can understand how a robot works like and what their motivations yeah. are. Uh, like you can sense their motive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. So, Anne. So I guess what my question is, we talked about key skills. Yeah. Um, for our uh, archetypes. So how does that, it, do we get like a bonus to key skills or what does that actually mean mechanically? Yeah. Mechanically, if it's one of your key skills, you can you are allowed to put up to three points in it at character creation. I mm. see. Okay. And everything else is up to two. Just one. Oh, just one. Oh. oh. Yeah. I've and you don't, and you don't have that many points to spend either. So yeah. you. No, no. So it was very good that we decided to kind of spread out the skills of the parties. Yeah. Yeah. It's and almost I, like we've played RPGs before. No. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go back to the computer nerd after <laughs> this optimization. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we know who we've been Max are in the group now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. What a shock. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh gosh! 
Um, oh no. <laughs> uh, Ellie, you've already distributed your skill points. Would you like to give us a random sampling of how you uh, how you did so? Yes, and this is all again based on more by backstory than the archetype, so it makes sense to me. But uh, so if people in chat get panicky about like what an idiot, then just know it's an old Ellie play. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I put uh, on body, I put sneak, three skills. <laughs> oh, that old chestnut. That old Ellie that play? old Ellie play. Oh. An old Ellie play of ruining the entire party. Um, no, I have put three, <laughs> my, I put my three in sneak because I figured I'm the tiny one. I'm Tiny Tim, basically. And so you guys can send me in to like do stuff is what I'm thinking. And that was my role in the 80s, or actually more like the 90s because I was one years old in the 80s. But uh, uh, like my brothers would send me in to sneak apples from from neighbors and, and like ruin other people's bikes. Um, so I think that could be fun. What? Wait, wait, yeah. wait. Hold oh, yeah. yeah. on. Stealing apples that. and ruining bikes? <laughs> well, that should be a game. That should be a game. <laughs> it was hmm? called the Mischief Club. And I was part of it. <laughs> God, I would kill for a sibling. Oh that sounds amazing. Oh my yeah. God, you're killing me already. This is amazing. Mischief Club? The Mischief Club. <laughs> and you were. Apple thief <laughs> in chief. Uber yeah, Chitality. well, no, 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 no. I was, I was recruited by my older brothers. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get out of this relationship, Ellie? Or did they just use you? <laughs> of course oh, they no. did. And and then I remember they were like, Ellie, if you don't do this, you don't get to eat dinner tonight. Uh, <laughs> my <parents> <laughs> Holy crappies! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's a, oh, no. it's a lot to unpack. Now that I think back a lot, <laughs> I, was like, I remember. You need therapy for that. <laughs> Follow up question. Yeah. yeah. Did you get to eat the apples you stole? No, 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 no. I would give them to them to like to honor my position in the mischief club, so I could stay. And then uh, and eat as tribute. Oh, and <laughs> I remember now they had one of those bullies at uh, like in our playground, um, and then. Uh, I had an apple and I'm like, here, and he's like, go fetch me another one, and if you fail, this is what's gonna happen to you. And then he threw the apple into a tree, and it just exploded <laughs> into a million pieces. Uh, so I was like, I have to get more apples now. Yeah, these... <laughs> wow, Sweden's really weird. Yep, yeah. this, is, this is where this game comes from, so you know now why they created uh, things from the flood. Because <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna have to Was go it back. dark enough for us Swedes who know the true pain of growing up? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So I feel like I'm gonna have to go instinct. back and add a lot more apple drama into the. Uh, into the, into yeah. the like I'm really missing a key element here. Yeah. yeah. I thought I didn't realize that wasn't the thing. You call like we call it parla eplen. Like you would s sneak apples. That was the thing. Okay, yeah, that's cool. not a thing here. This is okay, what, cool. This is why <laughs> idiomatic translation is such a delicate thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know when when you guys were talking to Bob Apple bobbing or whatever the thing right. you guys do here, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> all the time. Oh, I know what that is. That's yeah. like stealing apples from your neighbor. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, no, so does everyone have your... their own apple tree so that people can steal from each other? Oh yeah, it was like we we lived. Uh, people had orchard like those beautiful apple trees that would go pink in the spring. Yeah, it was yeah like an Animal Crossing. You know, when, Her when Herbert Hoover was pursuing the chicken in every pot policy for the United States, Sweden was pursuing the apple tree in every yard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. that's right. It's the same. It's the same Sorry thing, about that really. sidetrack, but uh, yeah, you know, so I like. So I illuminating. Three, three in sneak and two in move. Um, and then I have one in investigate, two comprehend, two in empathize. So Hold on. Anything that you can only put more than one in your three in your three key skills. Oh shit! Ooh, Ellie did it wrong. Ooh, teacher, thought, teacher. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I fucked up. Then I thought you said. Uh, okay, so then it's a bunch of ones then. Yeah. So you can put three in calculate, investigate, and comprehend. Well, everything else you have to put. Uh, you can only put one in. Ellie, you're aware okay. this is new game. Who this? Not the mischief club, correct? <laughs> because the way you're distributing points makes me think that you think it's the Mischief Club. Yeah, it's yeah. very Mischief Club. Yeah, oh crap. All right, all right, right. Now I have to do math. One, two, three, four, six. So I have one more point to spend somewhere. Where should I? Maybe I'll put it in. Uh, may, maybe I'll put it then in uh, 
calculate, just because that was a key skill. But I mean, I don't think I'll use it much. You might. Yep. Who knows? Yeah. You're very lucky. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, alrighty, Grant. Let's mix up the order here. Grant, what did you? Are you how did you distribute your skill points? Uh, Heather is going to excel at two of her key attributes or key skills, which are contact and charm. Those will both be threes. I feel like she's got to know the right people with her family. <laughs> Uh, and of course, she's this, charming. This could this is either going to be like legendary, insufferable, or, or insufferable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then she put uh, a one into the following skills: lead, move, sneak, and empathize. Ooh. So deep down, underneath that cold black heart, she actually does. She is able to empathize with her fellow humans. Well, I don't think empathizing necessarily means that you have to have good intent after you've been yeah. able to it's share like feelings. Thinking, knowing the perfect insult to cut someone yeah. down to size. Right. Eyebrows. In yeah. fact, Eyebrows, I, exactly. I think the things that she teases people about are her greatest insecurities, which is classic mm. bully stuff. Sure. Mm, yeah. Empathize doesn't necessarily mean compassion. I've right, got, right. I've got some stuff for that for us to really feed off of Grant. I've already, I'm, I'm cooking Ooh, it up. Chicken in every coming. pot. Here we yeah, come. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the same. Um, cool. Yeah, I love it. But what do you got going on, Am? Well, I'll tell you. Um, so I have a one in sneak. Um, because I feel like there's a little bit of mischief involved in being a rocker, in having to like you know, get places you're not supposed to be and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I've also chosen a three and move because uh, sometimes you get caught and you gotta run. It's just, it just seems like a good insurance policy to take out of my own bad choices with zero luck on the line. Um, for Tinker, I've put a one in Tinker because I've got a five in tech. So I think all together that'll give me a pool of six and I think she's a creative person. Uh, who can think about creative solutions. I don't think she's the kind of person who could, you know, program a robot, but she might be able to, you know, pick a lock or, uh, you know, put some, put two things together to, or figure out how to like use two things to, to, to get in a square peg in a round hole. I don't know. We'll figure it out when it happens. Also, interestingly enough, Heather, uh, I have a, a one in contact and a three in lead which leads mm. me to believe that in our early friendship, we knew everyone, we were both popular, but then we tried out for the musical and I got the role and you didn't. Oh, oh no. No. And, then oh, man. and that kept I, me, like, you set me on the right path away from those freaky theater kids, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, now, and now you have to draw the line in the sand and you're like, I'm not like them, I was never like them. They suck and I'm cool. Uh, and I'm just, yeah. And, and so to that end, I like that, you know, I got a little bit of contact, but you've removed some of that from me because you've cut me off with your bullying ways, right? Maybe. Right. And then, uh, but instead of charm, I was going all, I was going to like put some stuff in charm, but then I was like, no, she's got lead. So I beefed up lead to three. So are you like a, are you like a, a new order kind of like the clash kind of fan of rock? And I'm more like a Spandau ballet and tears for fears type of person. Is that the difference in our tracks kind of going on here? I don't know. I think, um, I think, I'm reading rocker in more of a broad way, like mm -hmm. in more of a broad way. No, uh, but <laughs> not like Broadway, uh, but like a little like that. Uh, but in more in just that she is, she's known in the school for being like musically gifted. She'll like be a, she'll do singer songwriter stuff. Okay. She likes Madonna. Um, but, you know, she likes, yeah, that, that kind of that's stuff. That's an important distinction because there are a lot of like, uh, I knew people, uh, some of my sister's friends, would yeah. like dress up like they were in a hair metal band, but they had no idea how to play a guitar. The fact that you are right. actually musically talented and it's not yeah. just an image thing, I think is a really nice distinction. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think she, you know, probably, we'll get into Anchors later, but I feel like with everything that's going on in her particular shitty life, I think, you know, she probably is friends with a music teacher or something uh, who like actually sees that this is a, a respite for her in this horrible sick sad world um and then in mind i've decided to be real dumb uh and only give myself one point and empathize and the rest is up to god um <laughs> wait so not to mechanically rain on your parade here but no, it's I, okay I, you can only put more than one skill point in move charm or empathize so that's move. that 
charm. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't pick one that has lead. Okay. Well, let, let's let's just um not do any of that. Uh, <laughs> it is it is. I have been rained upon, but I shall rise again like a flower uh, after a storm. <laughs> Uh, and I shall also be good at charming people. Haha, ha, so there. Uh, <laughs> well, cool. It so belies your charm. past history with Heather. It's true. Yeah. It doth. It doth. Um, great. And Skid, wh- what is this jock skillful at? So I've got three in force and three in move. He's uh, just a just a gifted athlete. Just he's a real, real good jock. What sport does he play, or what sports? Basketball. Basketball. Oh a basketball yeah, cool. Uh, like he's good at everything, but he he loves basketball. His, actually, his dad loves basketball more than anything. Uh... So he's got three in force, three in move, one in sneak, uh, one in lead, one in contact, and one in program. And I'm kind of basing this character a little bit on a friend of mine growing up, my friend Chris, who was we were we were all our little nerdy group. We you know we played D and D and everything together, and then and we were kind of uh, shunned and everything because we were nerds. But then this guy Chris, who was like one of the coolest guys in school, he secretly really always wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons, so he kind of insinuated himself into our group and then overnight we were we were elevated like three social strata and <laughs> it was like all of a sudden people were like, oh cool yeah and so <laughs> like girls would be nice to us so that they could get in good with chris and it was it was crazy so i think he's secretly like even though he's a jock he can't let on but he loves like computer games and he loves geeky stuff but he can never mm-hmm. let on so he he play he has his computer and he loves playing Ultima 2 and everything yeah. nice I love that. I, I, love I think that. that's going to be very interesting. I know it will come in handy in a minute. Um, okay. So those are all skills. Sk- Ellie, did you want to update us on how you redistributed? Or <laughs> Yeah, sure. Um, I put one in sneak, one in move, one in calculate, uh, and then three in investigate, three in comprehend, because those are my key skills, and then one in empathize. Amazing. Great. Cool. So again, you're gonna what you're gonna for every every time you have to roll dice, you'll take the the relevant skill plus or sorry the relevant attribute plus the skill, and those that's how many d sixes you roll, and every six is a, is a success. Um, cool. All right. So now let's talk iconic items. So items in the game just give you bonus to your dice rolls, anywhere from one to three extra dice on a particular roll, uh, and you each start the game with one iconic item. And this should say something about who you are, and no matter what it is, and uh, mechanically, it's just going to give you two bonus dice on its relevant roll. Uh, and so you'll see on in the book there are some suggestions for each type uh, of some iconic. So, for instance, I'll pick one. That, I'll pick a, a type none of, none of you chose. Mm-hmm. So, for the computer geek, none of you is a computer geek, right? Nope. Um, you could choose a com- like Graham read them off before, like a computer or a pocket calculator or a toy lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can, and now, you, and like you can make a case for how you're using the item that it should affect a certain role. So, like, yes, you've got a toy lightsaber, and it's a toy, but you could argue that it should be used for a force roll. See what I did there? Uh, <laughs> but you could argue it should be used for a force roll because, like, you're going to try to like hit something with it, or like use the lightsaber to kind of like, you know, to defend you from crazy robots or bullies or something nice um mm-hmm. so yeah so or you could or you like if you have the, the computer you could use you could try to use it for different things and it's gonna if if i if you convince me uh then that will give you a plus two on that roll so two extra dice um anyone have an iconic item already or that one in mind yeah I ellie what, what do you got ellie <laughs> i do i'm ellie i'm, I'm do. perfect uh, <laughs> well, Teacher's now pet over here. <laughs> we get into the character. Um, I uh, so I have uh, this again might also ruin the entire game because I now realize how the hell am I going to use this thing? But um, I have a Hasselblad camera, which is a Swedish manufacturer of cameras, 2000, um, and so he is using that to. Uh, snap a bunch of pictures on everything uh, in nature and all of that stuff and he inherited it from his grandfather who passed away who was from Sweden uh, as well so you'll be so. Pa- you'll be playing a character of Swedish ancestry on, on the game Ellie 
I will, Matthew. Wow. Funny you should ask. Um, yeah, his mother was his mother was Swedish, uh, and he lived his entire. Do you want to hear all this now? We'll uh, no. You're right. You're right. We'll get to that. Okay. Cool. Um, Skid, what is your iconic item? Uh, my iconic item is a game worn UNLV jersey worn by Armin Gilliam his freshman year that my mother bought in a charity auction right before she died and gave it to me and I am never seen without it I wear it all the time and it's too big obviously it's way too big for me it like drapes down along my thighs but I'm always wearing it all right uh, for those at home uh, UNLV is the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And I believe Armand Gilliam is a basketball player. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. He was he was a very good basketball player. He was drafted number two overall in 1987 by the Phoenix Suns. And uh, yeah, big power forward, six foot nine, post player. Yeah. So he's I my cannot- hero. I love UNLV basketball. He loves UNLV basketball, and uh, he loves basketball, and, but uh, but yeah, he's, he worships Armand Gilliam. All right. Amazing. By the way, you all, everyone at home, you all know this is sk- one of Skid's secret skills, is that he can, if you name a professional basketball player, he can tell you what year and, and, and place they went in the draft. Yeah, I hope yeah. I didn't mess that up, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> who, who will even know? It's not like anyone's watching. True, yeah. Uh, I, know. I know. I know the crowd I'm talking to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Anne, what's your iconic item? I am struggling, um, but here's 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 the. Th- I just know how important hair is, but hair is not an object, right? How about a hairspray? So, or- Ooh. oh yeah, I, 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 I like, sh- maybe. But go with me on this. I feel like I, I I saw here and I was like, what about jewelry? You know what was really popular in the 80s was like charm bracelets, like necklaces mm. with like a bunch of different charms on them and bracelet with bracelets with a bunch of different charms. And I feel like I want to have like a charm bracelet that is has like different things that she's collected. Maybe it's a an heirloom from her mom's side of the family that has different things from when they traveled around. But now that now that her like her parents are separated and she's like living here with her dad. Uh, that's like you know a memory of a life where she actually got to like travel around and do cool things, and now it's not that anymore. Yep. I feel like yeah, it feels it feels iconic. I, it feels like it's built to stretch to what I need it to do to get bonuses on roll. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean Perfect. that's that's great, and if you want to yeah. go with that, like I'm all for it. But also, I yeah. will say I would allow hair, your hair, to be your iconic item. My hair. Okay, let me think about it. Come okay. back to me, and because like. It's just important. Hair is just very important. Per- were perms were perms a thing in the eighties or was that not? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh god. I. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Cool. <laughs> like I'm uh, thinking currently like splash hair, like mm. pink splash hair. Nice. Right. I love it. Just so much hair. There was a great book that came out last year called We Ride Upon Six, which is about. I I, I told Troy about it because it took place in uh, in. I think it takes, it takes place in Dan- Danvers. Massachusetts, but it's about a, a, uh, a high school women's field hockey team that makes a, basically like a pact with the devil to win a championship, or they, or so they think. And one of the characters has a claw, and the claw like kind of like takes on a, a mind of its own. It's amazing. So I was like, oh, I'm nice. fully in support of hair being <laughs> yeah. what you use to get bonuses to your roles. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. All right, yeah. Heather. What is Heather's iconic <laughs> item? Well, even though Heather's only in ninth grade, she got asked to the prom this year. Ugh. And oh. when she got drew, asked to the prom, uh, it was very important. And her parents helped buy her the exact same plum Ferragamo dress that Princess Di wore to Buckingham <laughs> Palace on May 2nd, 1980. <laughs> And uh, uh. <laughs> so this dress is like a the like best homecoming dress you've ever seen, and she's she looks like five years older when she's in it. Like she would wear it to try to sneak into clubs and to like buy beer before mm. she should with like a fake ID. And she probably put on a pair of heels or something and a pantyhose and like her mom's lipstick that she wouldn't normally wear. So it's like this power suit that like sets her aside, makes her this peacock that she wants to be but also lets her attempt to 
uh, infiltrate like older places that she has no business mm-hmm. being in and thinks mm-hmm. she wants to be a part of. But it's like one of those things wherever like the first time you have a beer, you like spit it out and you actually hate everything older and you should actually wait for it. But she's rushing towards it. Oh, yeah. All right. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm taking notes because these things, it's, and I'm just like, I wrote okay. down for Ellie, I wrote down Swedish made camera. And then Grant, I wrote down <laughs> Plum Faragamo dressed the Princess Diana wore to Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> and when she's casual mode, Incredible. she just has a totally tubular scrunchie that she loves playing with. And she'll move tubular. it constantly from her wrist back to her hair. And she's just constantly <laughs> doing her hair up and down yeah. just as a way to yeah. get boys to look at her. Oh, that, I did that too. I was a slut in high school, so I make whoa, that makes sense. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not Sorry. judge. Don't talk Sorry, about so my I friend that like... way. Yeah, don't talk about Matthew's friend that way. Some people. <laughs> oh my god! I feel like some people are born with good hair, and other people have to use scrunchies. Yeah, uh, are fair. scrunchies wow. having like a comeback in the UK? I ask. It's made a comeback here as well. It's perfect for. It's been used for several years to remove makeup from your face. And now people have actually started using it in other ways because it doesn't damage your hair as much. <laughs> and so now you know. Um, Grant, now you know. <laughs> you know? Okay. I, I, what? I already knew that, Matthew. Oh, my God. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh. so I, I have made a, de- I, I have come down on a decision here about yeah. this iconic item. Um, and it's neither of the things I originally said it was going to be. Oh. It is indeed a leather jacket. Ooh, oh, very cool. Oh, yes. With the emblem of Cher's latest tour emblazoned <laughs> on the back and then Rhodey written on the bottom. Oh, it is whoa. too big for her, but it is sick and it belonged to her mom. I love who it. Was a Rhodey on Cher's tour. Cool. Yeah. It's See, much better. What's fun it's about so playing cool. with you all is actually like, the, there's a whole step in character creation where I'm just supposed to ask you each questions and I feel like we probably can just skip that step because you guys, <laughs> you guys make such great choices along the way and just bake it all in. They're like yeah. All of your decisions are character based so well yeah. done. Well done all of you. Alright, all let's 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 keep things Thanks, moving, Dad. shall we? Oh. <laughs> okay, so now you all each have to pick a problem. A capital P problem. So this is part of, a part of your everyday life, something that worries you. And what it really is, is a signal from you to me that says, this is what my character is struggling with. And this is what you should use GM to put my character in trouble. Um, so uh, there's some, here are some random examples from some of the type pages. Um, my mom or dad is having a secret affair. I steal money. I shoplift. Nobody tells me how my dad died. I'm bullied. You know, I have an unrequited love. Something like that. Something that you know that's going to be kind of present in your thoughts a lot. What if you have too many capital P problems? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the better, but pick one for the purposes I know, of the I'm second. I am. I'm. A, I have one. Go for but it. But I can. Ellie. But I've gone first every time, so I, I can wait for other for the other children to try. Well. Okay, harsh. fine. I'll go. Um, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> And this is a little bit ocean at the end of the Laney of uh, Neil Gaiman's book, but um, uh, so my father, uh, I'm pretty sure he's sleeping with my nanny, uh, oh. and uh, and I'm pretty sure my nanny is a psychopath killer, <laughs> like oh. uh, she's some sort of monster. So that escalated uh, really, really pretty. Like, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think she's a werewolf. Exactly. Yeah, I think she. Uh, but like, I think he, with the lack of understanding, like how women work, I guess, and like how they use their, like manipulation or whatever. You know, women they do that kind of shit all the time. I've and heard of so, it. Yeah, and so I think uh, young, uh, my young little boy here um, is assuming things about her. But it would be cool, Matthew, if you wanted to actually make her a horrible if that's a thing in this game. But yeah, I, you she, never know. He he has he's very suspicious of her, and he has confirmed that they do have an affair uh, by accidentally see them once. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Great. Hey, who? What are what are our other problems? I I got one. Give it to me. Um, my dad works at, I don't know if this is a possibility, but like works at the loop, like he's sure. a physicist or something. 
who knows? He's sciences at the loop. I don't know what that means. You can tell me, Matt. Uh, but he has been... Uh, we live... It's just the two of us. I'm an only child. And I have been discovering him uh, sleepwalking. And it's been getting progressively worse and worse and worse. To the point where, like, I show up at school not having gotten enough sleep. Uh, like, dirt under my fingernails. Like, wearing yesterday's clothes. Like, a lot. Uh, because sometimes I wake up and find out he's not in the house and I have to go track him down uh, and find him and wake him up and like get him back home. Great. All right. And yeah, he can definitely be a physicist in the loop. That's mm-hmm. totally, that's totally like actually perfect. Um, great. Skate, what you got? What's, what's your jock's problem? I think my jock's problem is that my dad is an alcoholic and he is responsible for my mom's death but i'm me and him are the only people that know it he was drunk driving one night and uh we were all in the car and mom died in the accident and he moved her body into the driver's seat so that he wouldn't get arrested jesus oh jeez okay great grant What's your problem? Uh, I was going to do mom addicted to pain pills and tells me that I'm ugly and it deals with my self-esteem. But it's we already have a parent addicted to drugs. I was thinking there's a, two other options I had. Uh, one of which was uh, she likes to pretend like she doesn't care about school, but she's actually the salutatorian. She's like very mm. smart and going to get into school. And what like, a horrible problem. I oh know. my god. Uh, <laughs> so horrible. We've got so many problems in this world. <laughs> That's like a lowercase p problem, Grant. <laughs> but, no. but <laughs> Grant. That's such a Grant problem. The, the other problem would be uh, that... My, uh, my greatest weakness is I care too much. Yes. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. Her other problem is that she um, was a total nerd earlier in life in like elementary school before she knew Anne's character. Um, and she Anne knew a little bit about it, but there's actually... The potential of a transfer student coming in from the town she moved from that knows all about her past, and she's worried about that person meeting her oh, friends yeah. and telling her, mm. like, all of the actual... Who she used to be. Yeah. I love that. So you've That's got good. a secret nerd past that might yeah. get exposed? Yes. Okay. Great. And a little bit of it overlap with Anne's character, but it looks like much yeah. deeper, much worse. There are photos of me probably on someone's camera that could like get out somehow. Yeah. All right. All right, I cool. I love that. Save that salutatorian thing though. You might want to use it for the next mechanics. Um, so the now you're each going to pick a drive. So the drive is the reason you expose yourself to dangerous and difficult situations to solve mysteries. Uh, and again, I'm going to give you some examples, but feel free to make up whatever you want. So from the book, some examples are like, I'm in it for the thrill, or I love puzzles, or just peer pressure, or like you want to find the answers to the big questions in life. Uh, something like that that's going to drive you to kind of do extraordinary things and not just you know stay in the safe bubble of your everyday life. I got one. Lay it on me. All right. So Ellie doesn't have to go first every time. I, I got this, Ellie. Uh, so um, mine is that uh, when her when her mom and dad like split up, uh, he's like her drive is to try and get back to her mom. And part of that, I think, she thinks there's something wrong with what's going on at her dad's work based on like his stress level and the fact that he is for some mystical and unknown reason, like doctors can't say why he's like sleepwalking at night, what that's about. Um, She feels like there's something like mystical or strange going on and she wants to expose uh, the man. She wants to take it to the man. Great. Yeah. In my notes, I wrote also, also, fuck the man. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Awesome. Perfect. Uh, Anybody else got one? I do. But I can't. Okay, sure. Um, I uh, I um, I wrote down that um, uh, he wants to he wants to get the respect from his father, his highly abusive father. Um, so um, because similar to Skid, uh, the mother is uh, died when he was five. Uh, sorry, eight uh, from breast cancer. 
um, and so he's alone, living now alone with his dad, and uh, his very strict dad. So he wants to, but he he's too young to be like fuck you, dad. So he not right now his dad is still his hero, so to speak, and he wants to just get the respect from him. What does your dad do? Is he uh, is he work at the Loop or? Yeah, he's an engineer at the Loop. Um, so um, so his dad, uh, yeah. Great. Oh, it's gonna be a little bit more significant when we talk about more of that stuff. All let right. it, yeah, let us know when you want more details. <laughs> Great. Um, Skid, what's your drive? I'm not sure. I think the first thing that comes to mind is I think he just wants to be out of the house as much as possible. Mm. Just wants to be away from from his home life. Perfect. That's mostly it. And then also, I think his mother worked at the Loop. And so he, there might be some curiosity about, I think he's just very just fascinated by her having died so young and being kind of a, of a grounding force in his in his life he's 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 wonders about her so maybe that could be something but i think mostly he just wants to be away from his home as much as possible great love it all right grant what you got um i think heather's drive is that the school principal hits on her and puts her in compromising situations, oh, hugs shit. her in public, touches her knee like if they're sitting down. And the, the salutatorian thing was a really good uh, window into this. She wants, she can't push him away too much because he threatens her about like ruining her record, her academic record. And her way out of this town and away from him is to graduate and go to a school somewhere on the East Coast. So she actually has real problems and real reasons to kind of be a, a jerk to everyone because um, you know as great as it is that she's physically attractive and all the everyone looks at her and stuff there are plenty of problems that go along with that too and it's not easy oh, so yeah. she didn't ask for it because she's yep. being sexually assaulted it yes sounds like, yep. is what you're saying yeah. yep. yes okay. also let's like keep in mind that these people are 15 or younger just 15 or younger the, the principal is an asshole I'm oh, and again no, I know I'm just just uh putting it out there. Yes. Yes, yeah, yes, this yes. Is a, this is a very common yeah, thing that happens. A, it is a problem. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. So that's pride. Oh, I'm sorry. That's drive. And now we pick pride. So your capital P pride is something that makes you feel strong, important, and valuable. And it can be known amongst the group or it can be secret. And mechanically speaking, mm -hmm. what how this works is once per mystery, you can, quote, check your pride and you get one automatic success on a roll. And you can even do that Ooh. after you fail a roll. Um, or you can do it too with it. You can within a, even if you roll a successful enough successes, you can get additional successes because you need them for bonus effects. Um, it is worth noting uh, that whenever you check your pride or use your iconics item or use a skill, even you kind of have to describe how you're doing that and make a case for why that skill should be able to do the thing you're doing. Um, so some smart some examples of prides. Uh, I'm the smartest kid in school. Grant, I feel like I'm the salutatorian. Actually, is a great pride if you want to use that. Um, I help other people. Oh, this one's right from the book. No one calls me chicken. Uh, <laughs> I also feel like not I play nobody, the guitar. Not know how. <laughs> um, uh, Gr Grant, do you, are, do you think that you're, you being the salutatorian is your pride? Yeah, I'm just trying to think. I think that is her pride, I, but I don't think it's public. I think that's her personal like that's rock of how she values herself. But I think she puts out kind of a more surface level materialistic type of vibe to everyone else that's totally fine like your pride can be totally secret it can be okay. known only to you yeah she's very she's very happy when she when she gets her report cards all the time she just looks at them and like it, it's also part of her drive she probably thinks about like how can i eke out like an extra extra credit on the last test to try to get to valedictorian um, um i just realized i have no idea how to spell salutatorian S a l u t a t o r i a n. I Thanks, Google. Okay. Google spell check. <laughs> uh, who else is a pride? Uh, I think my guy. He's good at basketball. He's Great. very, very proud of of that. Simple. Excellent basketball player. What position Great. does he play? Have you decided? I think he 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 probably plays center just because of his size at his age. But he really wants to be a guard. Like he really wants to be like Michael Jordan. Yeah, he's like a Kevin Durant type or like an Anthony Davis, like much more talented at passing. 
Yeah, but, like, but it's too early. It's 1988, so that that yeah. didn't have that kind of player. It was you got to so be the rare five, kid. Then. You got to be the five. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to be the five. I want to be the one or the two. <laughs> All right, we're done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, no, so that. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Sorry Fantastic. for the sports. I actually do have one prop uh, while you're talking. All right. Oh shit. Oh yes. What do you, Ellie? What's your? Oh my god. Oh. That's amazing. Wow. Now Perfect. I'm really in it. Oh, <laughs> I now I can see feel. it though, right? Made my hair. It looks Sports amazing. <laughs> right, Ellie, what's what's your character's pride? Um, yeah. So I I I'm I'm thinking about the phrasing of it, but what it basically is is that he's a master at blending in and observing situations, so to speak. Like he knows that he um he basically is similar. Like I I think he thinks that he's the smartest kid in school, but like not necessarily in all subjects, but more like, I understand what's going on better than all these older kids. Uh, that like, he, he can see a situation and no one really notices him. So he's like a fly on the wall in many situations and can, uh, so I think that's sort of pride of like, I understand what's really going on sort of uh, pride. But I don't know how to phrase it in a way. Like, Well, uh, I mean, look, that's fine. It's like, you, hear, you think you're the smartest person that you, you know because you're great at like blending in and observing things that yeah. other people aren't. Yeah. 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 Like great. Uh, and Anne, what is your rocker's pride? People know my talent will get me the hell out of here. So it's that, that thing where like people have seen me perform at like school talent shows They've seen me perform at like local state fairs and things like that. Like I am, I am a known entity in this town as far as my musical skill. Uh, and unlike you know, like a punk rocker, like I think people are like, "Wow, that girl is really going to go somewhere." Um, and I think that's something that she's proud of. That you know, even though like school is hell, she gets like bullied a lot for it. That like people understand that. She has a future that's not here in this mm. shitty town. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. All right. So now we get the thing I was talking about before is you have to decide how you know each other. You have to define your relationship. So you're going to effectively be a group. So how is it that you know each other and how, why is it that you hang out with each other? And like you can, yeah. you can like be, you can meet your characters can be together or they can be a brother and sister I mean it doesn't seem like that's going to be that's going to happen here but like that's an option yeah um, you can be cousins like I don't know whatever it wants to be like how do you think you guys all know each other I think unfortunately my little guy is going to be the tricky one uh, because I think he is so much younger than everyone uh, and is also like socially inept but I do think that he is idolizing all of you uh, mm -hmm. so I think he Especially, I think he has a secret crush on Skid's character, the jock, mm -hmm. without like fully understanding his own feelings yet. Um, and I like the idea of be like what you said about your friend Chris, that like maybe, yeah. maybe he's been like the the one friendly popular kid. Uh, yeah, I think maybe I was just thinking maybe your kid was being bullied a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think we have some interests in common. Like yeah. we, we both like some geeky stuff. So I like stepped in to kind of protect you. Yeah. And despite our age difference and everything, we still we, and I we'll can, hang out. And I can see like how in the corridor you always says hi. And I yeah, like yeah. Oh, every time like you talk hi. You know, it's just then, like Chris. Yeah. It's just like Chris when I was a yeah, kid. So it was great. just like, ah, oh, it's so funny. Um, and with Heather and uh, Rocker Chick. Um, my, my name is Juniper. It's fine. Jun I've come Juniper. down on it. Um, I think um, he's unbelievably intimidated by you two. Um, but maybe if, if uh, Skid's, uh, Skid's jock knows you, then, yeah. maybe, then I know you through him, basically. Well, so I, I'm like the extension. I yeah, maybe I'm like you're in to this, the rest of the group. Yeah. Maybe. I was thinking in a, in a turn of events, because I'm so stupid, uh, that maybe you're my tutor. Even though you're like five years younger than me, you're so advanced that you're able yeah. to like be my my like chem tutor. And yeah, my, my dad, my dad's like very very. Uh, this is this is like from my real life. There was a time where my parents were like, "Dude, she's so bad at math. She's gonna die. She's gonna die. Yeah. She doesn't know how to the do one, math." Uh, the one problem with that, even though I love it, like yeah. maybe maybe it could be a tutor in something else. The one problem with my character is that he is, uh, while he's very 
book smart. He is yeah. ter- terrible at math to his okay, father's great Okay, well, what subject do you feel like he would be good at? Uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, um, history or something like that. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, something yeah. that's very related to books. And, and uh, I yeah, was yeah, going to yeah, say yeah. English, but... My character is Swedish, so he. That, let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's a good synergy because I think she's she's you know she's a lyricist. She writes music, so she can help you with your English, uh, yeah. and you can help her with like history and like opening her up her mind to the the greater world, which is what yeah. she wants anyways, is to like travel again, be like yeah. a citizen of the world and not just this town. But so I, I think, like and one of us has to be his end to this group. Yeah. Like yeah. Did one of us had to know this person first. Yeah. It would I be think weird it's you. if we both independently became friends with this that's 10-year-old. True. So. That's yeah. true. Well, no, then I, I so. would go with you. I would yeah. go with you. I think that story is stronger for both of you. But yeah. like that's that could be totally how you got how you started how Ellie started tutoring your character that it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. you met him through kids. I think it's an afterthought. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's the the way in at all. Yeah. Like I brought him over to your house. To, to yeah. drink tang or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you need help with this? Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Does that, Skid, does that mean your character is friends with uh, with Juniper? I Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I, maybe he has a crush on Juniper. Sure. Okay. And yeah. may, maybe. She's so cool. I don't know how you feel, Grant, but maybe our characters used to used to date, like in in elementary school or something. Yeah, I think so. Still hold th- hands in the sandbox. I think that it's awkward all the time because uh, Heather is at all of your character's games because she's the head cheerleader. Oh, oh yeah. And so she's like, uh, oh yeah, she's top of the pile. She's the one that they. She's she's not that tiny, but she demands to be the one that gets thrown. She's the a flyer. She, yeah, <laughs> and she uses she uses the megaphone and everything and goes all the the stuff. So awesome. like that's the other reason why it's so incredible that she's a salutatorian because she's very involved with extracurriculars yeah. and that takes okay. up a ton of her time. Man, yeah. she's gonna get into a way better school than UNLV. I'll tell yeah. you that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, and and Anne and my character know each other from being in music education yeah. at earlier ages and being friends, being very close yeah. friends until like puberty hit. Yeah, yeah, I have I had friends like that in in uh, in like elementary school where suddenly when other people thought they were really cool, then then it was like not really cool to be my friend anymore um, because I was not I I needed um, people to laugh uh, as this is an Ann Richmond original, uh, but I need I needed people to like be entertained by me. And I remember we went to different schools at the time. And so a big part of it was like, I would go to I would go to Pamela Martin's birthday party. Hey Pam, you're not listening to this. Uh, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way it's happening. Uh, but she like went to this awesome like this other great school and had all these really cool friends. And I remember thinking to myself, I remember going to the bathroom. It was such a middle school moment. I went to the bathroom and I thought, how am I going to make these girls like me at this sleepover? Like they they don't like me. And so I came out in like my big sleep shirt and my underwear, and I said I was underwear woman. Uh, <laughs> and I ran around, and they were like, everybody else was like, you know, making cookies or whatever the activity was uh, that we were supposed to do. And they were like, cool. And then they called me underwear woman in another school. And then those kids all went to different schools, and my school ended at eighth grade. So by the time I tried to go, like, uh, tail kids like not ta- that sounds like I was stalking them no, like when you would, when you would apply to a different school for high school and then you'd be connected with somebody to like show you around like and tour you around the school and shadow them they'd be like oh it's underwear woman from Pam's and I was like this will haunt me so I had yeah. to move to the east coast um, <laughs> and <that's- laughs> I did the I did the same thing in second grade. Everyone was mean to me and bullied me in class. And then one day, I remember looking down. I had like Reebok pumps on, and I just decided <laughs> to pull the sweatpants I was wearing up to my nipples. And I was like, "Everybody, look at me!" <laughs> and, and then you're like, "I'm nailing this." Yes. Um, They're laughing yet, at um, me. They're laughing at me. But yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I remember, so I think. I I think there's like a little bit of that to our relationship where like you clearly it's funny because I I think like for from Juniper's perspective, she saw that like you got stereotypically attractive, that people were into you and you're so smart. And that's not something that I'm good at. 
you know, and so she knows that element of that you're you're smart, you work hard in school, even though nobody else does really, um, and that she was just really jealous of it. Well, I also like that you might be leaning into your devil may care rocker kind of mm-hmm. uh, like uh, facade. Yeah. Uh, even because you do care a lot, actually, about what people, mm-hmm. but you're trying to push them away. Like, I like that. Yeah. Part. It's easier. Yeah. It's just easier for her to be like, yeah, well, I don't care. So cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Bully me. And, I, and Heather is sure. super jealous if she ever notices Skid's character has a crush on you. Yeah. Like the, yeah, yeah. She doesn't talk to him at all, and she like turns away from him every every time. He's like, "Hey," she's like, eh. <laughs> "But like he, she, she cares too." It's like that's the worst part about being a teenager. Yeah. It's just oh, like yeah. caring so yeah, much. It, that's and not yeah. you and I. We're around each other constantly because you're yeah. being the cheerleader. Like we're constantly having to interact. So, and so I, it, yeah. it sounds like yeah. So it's like Skid's character is kind of the hub that he is. Yeah. He's constantly yeah. interacting with Heather he's and the around center of attention. <laughs> But Maybe. he's also really good friends <laughs> with Juniper, and he's got a mm-hmm. well, he's got a crush on Juniper, so he's around her a lot, which brings yeah. in Heather, and then yeah. Ellie's character is also you know Skid's sidekick. So yeah. they're all they're kind of you guys are all together a bunch. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And I, think, I almost want to move us on a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, okay, so the next big thing you guys are gonna have to decide, and then we'll kind of move in, move into broader things, is your anchor. So each of you gets an anchor, which is a person you can go to for support comfort or care it could be a friend a parent or a teacher it just can't be one of you all um in the, in the way that mechanically this works is that um your anchor can help you heal conditions so while you're thinking about this i'll talk about conditions so again the kids can't die but they can suffer conditions so each condition gives you a minus one to each dice roll, to all of your dice rolls uh, and they can stack so you know if the conditions are on page 62 you can be upset scared exhausted or injured and they can stack. So you can be scared and exhausted or injured and upset. And if you get if you get five conditions, you become broken, which at which point you fall all dice rolls until you go and see your anchor or uh, spend time with each other and heal some of those conditions. Cool. Uh, so basically, you get a condition and you want to get rid of it. Uh, you can go, you can say, I need, I want to spend this, go, I want to scene with my anchor and then we'll do that and you can heal the condition. Okay. Um, so who are those people for each of you? A uh, librarian for me. Librarian, what's your name? Oh, damn it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can uh, go. You, you Mary can tell Osborne. Me Mary Osborne. There Mary you go. Good Osborne. name. Osborne. Solid. All right. Very normal. Yeah. <laughs> Skid, who's your anchor? Well, I think you, know, you feel free to, to shoot this down. But I think perhaps my anchor is the late great Jerry Tarkanian. <laughs> uh, coach what? of the UNLV running rebels. <laughs> I think he's maybe he's recruiting me. Like I'm just, I'm so, I'm, I'm such a coveted recruit, even at my age that uh, I can, I love I can that. turn to him. Oh, All right, let's go with God. it. And I Matthew it, has to play him. I love it. What I'm a specific to, I'm ass. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be if you need to go spend some time with with Jerry Tarkanian. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but like we'll just fold that into the well, game. Oh, well, just it, my man. maybe it's my coach. Maybe it's my actual coach. Not, Who happens not to Jerry be Tarkanian. this guy? Yeah. My coach, no, it's Jerry no. Barkanian. <laughs> 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 well, you decide. We can do either. I think you both are both are fun ideas. Um, so funny. And who are you thinking? Um, Mr. Horn. He's the chorus teacher. Uh, he like directs the band, you know. He basically he, he runs that part of the school, and he's just like a champion for the arts and what they can do for kids. Um, so a lot of a lot of like the artistic kids, uh, performance art artistic kids, just really like him. Uh, but Miss- he has cancer, and so I think like mm. there's an element of like he, Juniper knows he has cancer. He's afraid to tell the school he has cancer because he'll like maybe they'll be like maybe you go on sabbatical and then just never come back to this job uh and so i think i think there's like a a weird friendship that i would not describe it as like inappropriate in a romantic sense but like she knows intimate details of like the fact that he is going going through this you know process that other kids don't know and you know some of the more popular kids at school like make fun of him because he's like weak and getting thinner and you know, all of those things because they just don't know what's going on with them. All right. You say Mr. Horn? Yeah. H-O-R-N-E. Great. 
Um, and Grant, who is Heather's anchor? I kind of uh, had the similar instinct to Skid. Uh, I think my aunt <laughs> is actually Madonna. Shut <laughs> up! My mother is Paula Ciccione. Um, and she is currently in this 80s that never happened living in this part of Colorado Springs and like this is right as she's blowing up and I feel a little uh, a little bit unanchored recently because her career is top in the charts right now and I'm talking to her less and less so I would love I would love for you to role play Madonna I mean a phone call I would be happy to role play Madonna except it's mechanically I don't think that's going to function because I don't think Madonna's (laughs) going to be hanging out in Boulder City all the time. You know what? I think she would totally claim that her aunt was Madonna. This is true. Without it being true. (laughs) My my uncle works at a Madonna firmly in quotation marks is your anchor. The the reason that I I was kind of joking is because our lives are supposed to be very very mundane. Like that's part of the key theme of the game so uh, I that would be that's a little extraordinary I think maybe hmm. is there someone else that might live in Boulder City year round that might be your anchor grant who <laughs> doesn't summer well, Madonna in Boulder City play in Vegas <laughs> Madonna in person or Vegas Vegas. they could live in Vegas that's the greatest um, thing I've ever heard <laughs> come out of anyone's mouth uh, <laughs> ever then I think um <laughs> Who is her anchor? What were some other examples in there? Uh, some other uh, anchors. There is a famous friend of the family as an option, which is why I went with it. Uh, older sibling, mom, dad. Yeah. A friend, a, you know, a, a teacher, a parent. Um, you know, it could be a friend. It could be, I don't know, a coach. It could be, oh, obviously we've done that one. Um, I mean, what's... Don't take you, Coach Tarkani and he's mine! Yeah, you can't have Jerry Tarkanian. I think I think my anchor is uh, my English teacher, who is currently uh, encouraging me to go down uh, a route of creative writing, where to lead, whether it's journalism, uh, novelization, whatever. It's it's just spurning a desire for creation in her. Why can't we just get along, Heather? I know. I just feel like if we could just get out of our own way, we could be best friends. Because you're 14 and 15. It's true. Um, what kidding. is your English teacher's name? Uh, my English teacher's name is uh, uh, Mrs. Driver. Mrs. Driver. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So I'm going to combine the next next three things. Uh, I'm just going to okay. go through these rapid fire. Uh, so tell me your name. Give me a short description of yourself. And what is your favorite 80s song? So, Anne, okay. we know your name. Juniper. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, I really need time for the song, so I'm. That's uh, come back to me. I, I'm sorry. We can sorry. come back to this. We can also yeah. do the songs next time. Yeah. Ooh, we could open with that in our, we can open in with our the montage. Songs. Um, um, but what does, what does Juniper look like? Yeah, Juniper, that I can tell you. I have an incredible uh, dossier. No, I'm kidding. Uh, short, in, in short, uh, she is kind of like a short, wiry individual. Um, She does not lift, bro. Uh, She's got just the longest mermaid hair, uh, which is dyed um, like uh, pink, but like a home dye job. Uh, So she's naturally like a dirty blonde. So it's just like this pinkish, reddish, dirty blonde hair. Um, And she usually, you know, takes, takes a lot of care to like try to look counter cool if that makes sense so she's like definitely taking time on her makeup but not the way that like other girls do she's got like the smudged eyeliner um she's trying to look older and cooler than she is um and she wears like jeans uh and like band tee like a band tee usually uh and just this oversized leather share jacket um that she's got going on yeah Amazing. All right. Uh, Skid, talk to me about your character. Uh, my character's name is Peter Maravich Hunsacker. <laughs> Pistol Pete. Yeah, I was named after my dad's favorite basketball player. That's my, dad, that's my dad's favorite basketball player. Oh, wow. it's a, he's a lot of dad's favorite basketball players. Uh-huh. That's why I chose him. And I think his favorite 80s song is uh, Damage Incorporated. 
by Metallica. Okay. And what's he look like? He's uh, he's a tall kid. He's uh, tall, tall blonde, uh, and he has to wear. <laughs> this is just I'm just being me. I, he has to wear like uh, uh, James Worthy style uh, pre- prescription goggles when he plays because he has he has bad eyes. All right, amazing. <laughs> and he's always wearing that jersey. And he's always wearing the jersey. Always wearing the Armand Gilliam jersey. All right, uh, Ellie. What's your character's name, and what does he look like? Um, my character's name is Emil Bergman. Uh, Emil, and he it looks, he's a tiny little kid, blonde, uh, who does not know how to, uh, his dad is basically dressing him, so he wears like a bow tie, and he has his <laughs> socks stuffed in, uh, like his pants stuck, <laughs> uh, stuck into his socks, and he's wearing Ber- Birkenstock, uh, those sh- like um, is that it? like those uh, those shoes that uh, I don't know? It's called Birkenstock. No. What a nerd! I've changed my mind. I'm not protecting this kid yeah, anymore. Exactly. <laughs> I've had him bullies. He's uh, <laughs> yeah sandals. He, the Birkenstock yes, sandals. Sa- sandals. Yeah, and he. Uh, uh, I was thinking Newsy's calf, but then I was like, nah, that's too much. That's too uh, much. <laughs> and, and his uh, and his favorite song is um, Happy New Year by ABBA. Okay. Because it was his it was his mom's favorite song. Oh. Um, could you do me a favor? Yep. Would you type his name into the chat? Yes. <laughs> it's it's very e- it's E M I L. Oh. Yep, Emil, Emil. And you can say Emil. Everyone here calls me Emil. Is his claim to fame. <laughs> email. Email. Yeah, email basically, yeah. All right. And last but certainly not least, Grant, talk to me about Heather. So what do you need to know again? I apologize. Look, give me a list of things to tell you. Name, description, uh, short description, and favorite 80s song. Uh, her name is Heather Bianchi. Uh, she <laughs> has uh, 80, crimped hair, um, kind of uh, red blush cheeks. Uh, she wears a green eyeshadow a lot of the time. Uh, that contrasts with her striking blue eyes quite a bit. And uh, her favorite 80s song, I'm trying to divorce myself from the favorite 80s songs versus what she would like. Yeah, that's um, the hard part. I mean, there's so many. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, her favorite song is Take On Me by Aha. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Great. I, I will tell you that Juniper Grace Leonard's favorite song is Don't Stop. Believe it. <laughs> Hold Actually, on to that feeling. It's can just I, gotta can be. I, uh, can I change my song to Girls Just Want to Have Fun? Oh, yes. Please. <laughs> yes. Please. I think, Please yeah. do. Um, I will say. Can you imagine I that could... little nerdy bean just bopping? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm changing mine to 99 Luftballons. Oh, okay. perfect. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, I will say I could I could sit here and talk about your characters with you all night. Literally night. all day, all night. But we um, have work to do. Well, there's one last thing you have to decide, and then we're gonna move on. And that thing you have to decide is where. So all of you have a hideout. It's a place that all of you go to hang out together. Obviously, some of you are in different social strata and different ages. So there's a place where you guys can all go hang out and be safe. Um, so the GM is prohibited from putting you in trouble in the hideout. So I literally cannot do oh, it. Wow. Um, but it's also a place you can go to heal a condition so long as two or more other kids are present that can help you. So if you're scared or if you're upset or scared, you can go to the hideout and all of you can work together. Again, you'll describe the scene uh, to heal those conditions. Where do you I have think an idea. Go for it. Um, how about like uh, the photography red room, like the ro- red room where you develop photography? Dark room. Uh, because the dark room, uh, like uh, it's like an area around there. Because I think it, it's it would be in school. It would be probably where not many other kids would hang out. Only teachers occasionally, maybe. I was thinking that, or maybe like one of the locker rooms. Uh, or, I don't know. That was just something I thought about immediately. But. Well, yeah, we can't get in there, though, unless it's school's open. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. I we was should, thinking... Like, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was thinking, like, an abandoned gas station. Yeah. yeah. That we, like, transformed into our little clubhouse. Yeah. yeah. Mischief Club. Into our uh, Mischief yeah. Club. Yeah. It was Mischief. Yeah. Mischief, <laughs> Mischief Club actually had their hideout uh, on a roof on a on an, like, old electric box. Uh, like, <laughs> a big one of those big houses. 
Yeah. What about like a tree house? A tree house was in my mind too. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know if any of us would be have like, like the, the like handy type of feat in our character. Like I feel like yeah, one no. of us would have to be a master builder to do that. There are also, there aren't a lot of trees around there. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. thinking a gas I like station. Gas station. Might, yeah, gas I'm station in. is great. You've convinced yeah. me. Um, great. I just want to take another moment to point out, I, for those of you who weren't here earlier, uh, we're doing a giveaway here tonight, thanks to Free League, who, the publisher of this game, who's generously giving away some Tales from the Loop starter kits. Uh, the link to the giveaway is in the chat. Click, click that, and then we're going to announce the winners in the chat by the end of the stream tonight. Um, so normally, there are a bunch of questions. I actually really like this part of character creation, uh, but we're still going to skip it. Uh, but it, I would ask, I would ask each of you some individual questions, and the whole group would be there to hear them. And like, what? And then I would ask the group some questions, like, you know, who likes who, who who dislikes who, what are you fighting about, who's the leader, that kind of thing. Um, but I feel like you guys have actually answered a lot of those questions yeah. throughout. Um, so it's, it's nice that they give you a guide because not everybody that you play with, like out out there in the world, like knows, like wants to immediately reach for that stuff. So it's awesome mm -hmm. that it's part of here. Yeah, yeah, and I I, I think the, a lot of the questions are are fun. Um, like they're not just like what do you look like and what do you do. There's, I mean, the individual questions too are like, what do you dream about at night? You know, yeah. what what's your favorite food? And it's just it's just great. Mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, a great way to get people thinking that way. Yeah. About yeah. It. Especially like since they're your kids and like the stuff you like is so important and such yes. a part of like the identities you're trying to to create. It can be yeah. it's just it's really fun. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll start with that next next time. But I want to jump to uh, the mystery before we finish. Ooh. Ooh, it's um, time, guys. We've we've uh, kept it from happening for long enough. Now we <laughs> now we find a fate worse than death. <laughs> yes. No one dies. Only worse than only things worse than death. <laughs> Um, all right. So, uh, it's September in Boulder City. School has just started. Uh, you spent summer break hanging out at the pool, uh, because it's, you know, 110, 120 degrees in Nevada. So you got to find a way to cool off. You're skulking around Pearson, Pearson salvage, finding the old magnetrine parts, you know, spending the day watching the same movie over and over again at the Boulder theater or, Soaking up the air conditioning, maybe even rolling a few frames at the Boulder Bowl. And maybe maybe some of the older ones among, among you have even managed to hit, hitchhike a ride up to Lake Mead and spend a few days at the beach. Mostly, yeah. it was just hot. It was just so hot. And they say it's a dry heat, but it's, you know. It gets, it's impressive. It's frankly. impressive. Uh, but now that you're back at school, the baking heat starts to cool and there's a crisp snap in the air. It's good fishing weather for those of you who fish, uh, if you could get up to Lake Mead. So why don't we meet each of you in a scene from your everyday life? So these are, like, like I said, these are short. You're going to set them up and then we'll, like I'll jump in with you and we'll just role play for a little bit and then move on to the next scene. Um, they can have trouble in them. So if that happens, I will ask you to roll, uh, but they don't have to. They're mostly just to kind of like, let's meet each of you in your world. So does anyone have a scene that wants to go first? I do. Great. But <laughs> Ellie, um, don't be afraid about being a volunteer. Yeah, I just yeah. figured, why the hell not? But, um, okay, cool. Um, so my scene starts with uh, an encounter with my dad. Okay. Um, I, I would like to... I, he, he has told me I have to report my, my grades on my test, and we just had a math test. And I, despite me studying so much, I've never been able to get an A, uh, and this time I got a C. Okay, and where so are you? Now, uh, I'm at home, uh, back from school. And uh, and he's sitting with my my nanny uh, talking, and it, for some reason it's been a while since I've been able to talk to him in private because she seems to be always around. Um, and uh, he has been yelling at me for several several weeks uh, because I need to you know become an engineer like him, and so he's still so unbelievably disappointed in me. Um, but Devil, what is this C? A C? What are you stupid? What are you, do you do? You even bother to study? Explain this. I, I I really tried that this time. I, I it was it was just that um, it was some questions that I hadn't pre prepared for. Uh, this we, is this is just simple. This is simple stuff. Long I, division. You know long division. I I I, I actually don't. Is I thought it was regular division. It's, and you know um, 
It's this thing that sometimes, sometimes the numbers they bleed into each other, and I don't, I don't really know how to, I, I don't know what to do that. I don't even, I don't understand you. Sometimes I don't understand you. Do you, I, do you even want to have a career? Like, and he lo- looks to the nanny. What's the, what's the nanny's name? Um, her name was, I think I wrote down Matilda. Matilda, and he looks to Matilda. He's like, well, I, can you help me here? Like, what is this? What's going on with this? And she's just like, well, how does she react? Well, I think um, she wants to uh, comfort him, but he doesn't trust her at all. Uh, she does it so, in a way that's like. So Matilda's like, okay, you know, it's let's take it easy. Let's let's like let's let's cool down. Let's cool our jets. You know, he's trying really hard, and maybe she reaches for you to kind of like pat you on the shoulder. Um, I'm sorry, Dad. Can I can I go to my room? <laughs> Please? You're always up in your room. I, you could be using that time to study, but what are you doing up there? No one I, knows. I, I am studying. I, I just, I tried really hard, Dad. I, I really did try hard. Well, it wasn't good enough. Okay. Oh, man. Or email. Yeah. All right. Okay, great. So things are pretty shitty at the, Ber- the Bergman household. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Matt. If you need to take a deep breath, let that let that evil man exit your body. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> Ellie was yeah. sure she wasn't gonna cry tonight, yeah. and now <laughs> that's all blown to hell. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. Who else has a scene? I have. I have a scene. All right, Skid. Let's do it. So, Pete is he's in his bedroom, uh, killing time. His dad has been out at the bar all night, and he got home like right before dawn. And he's just waiting until he passes out so he can sneak out of the house. So it's in the morning and he's just, he's playing Battletech Crescent Hawks Inception on his Apple IIc computer. He's just clicking away on that with the sound of the TV blaring in the other room. And when he hears the snore, he gets up and tries to sneak out as his dad is watching a a VHS recording of George Michael's sports machine from the night before. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so you how do you sneak out? Where do you how, do you go out the window? Do you go out the front door? Or? I, wh- I I sneak past him like our living room and our front door are like right next to each other. So I have to like I have to sneak past him out the front door. He's sitting there. And you walk by, and he's like, <clears throat> and you freeze. And he he like looks around a little bit, looks and then. He, What do you do? I try to, I open the door as quietly as I can. My backpack, my Armin Gilliam jersey on. And All I right. just try to open the door as quietly as I can to get out. All right, Skid, you put yourself in trouble. I need you to roll sneak. Okay. <gasps> All right. Now, with rolls and like, with rolls and tails from loop, oftentimes if you don't, if you, if you fail a roll, that can mean a condition. Jesus. Right. Starting off strong, Skid. Okay. <laughs> so I get to add my skill to my to my attribute for this. Yeah. Right? So it should be okay. body the number your body attribute score plus your your sneak skill number. Okay. So my body is five, and I have one in sneak. I've become I've I've, I've practiced sneaking because of this these this this type of situation in the house. So I can roll six dice. All right. Great. Uh, two sixes. I got two sixes. Okay, nice. so I will say not only are you able to sneak, but you get a bonus success. So you can. Okay, I'm. Mean, if you I'm friends with Stacy Ogman. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so you're able to get out the door without waking up your dad, and you get out into the night, and maybe let's let's just say it's a beautiful night. Like it's like, or you said it's early, early morning. It's right? morning. Like, yeah. It's just beautiful, and it's like it's cool for the first time in weeks. And I, where are you going? Do you have a plan? Is it a weekend? Uh, yeah. Let's say it's Sunday into Monday, so it's gonna be a, it's a, it's gonna be Mondays, or yeah, it's technically Monday, but it's you know. Okay, it's I'm probably really excited because I can shoot hoops outside now. It's finally cool enough, so I'm I'm probably going down to the lot to to practice free throws and shooting. 
Amazing. So Pete just gets down to the lot and just is sitting there, just like sinking free throws one after the next. Just does he have? Does he have a rhythm? Does he have a, like a routine? Oh yeah, yeah. He does. He he copies. He, pro- he, he copies Larry Bird. He tries to shoot like Larry Bird, so he just, oh. he's got the like cock like that, and uh, yeah, he just like over and over again. It's like mm-hmm. three bounces, boom, 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 center, Amazing. over and over and over again. See, I feel I just picture you just sh- just shooting free throws one after the next as the sun starts to rise over the yeah. mountains in Boulder City. Yeah, I love it. All right, and yeah, Grant, I got, got a scene. one. I got one. So, All right. same time. Uh, it's morning in the Leonard household, and uh, Juniper has taken to sleeping on the couch because it's easier to hear if her dad, like, goes through the back door in the kitchen or manages to get out the front door of the house. Uh, she, in her desperation, didn't set an alarm, uh, and suddenly wakes with a start and realizes, oh shit, the sun's up. She runs upstairs. Dad's not there. (coughs) Excuse me. She runs upstairs. Dad's not there. She gets on her bike and starts pedaling like mad. She, like, grabs her book bag, right? Everything she's going to need for the day. She's got to get ready now. She's got to find her dad before he's late for work. So she starts attempting to to track him along the, uh, the road. Uh, the road, we'll say, probably drives by the uh, caged basketball courts, waving <laughs> as she goes by. Uh, and, sinks, and he sinks another free throw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Getting better, she yells. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, she finally finds him. Wait. Kind of wandering. Oh, oh maybe? Oh, I don't you know. don't just get to find him, I don't him, know. Man. I don't know, You're- man. I'm setting up a scene. You're in trouble. Oh no! Oh, oh no! What kind of trouble? You gotta roll. Let's, I gotta have DM you roll Daddy? investigate. Okay. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. An investigate? Guess yeah. what? I don't have pluses in it. Anything to do with my brain? All right. We're rolling <laughs> three. No, we're rolling two d sixes, and we're just gonna pray. <laughs> oh yeah, that's zero successes. Okay. Oof. All right. So you don't find him. Mm-mm. So you spent. You, are you, you? You're walking around. Are you driving around. What are you? I'm. What are you? I'm on my bike. Okay. So Juniper, leather jacket with a roadie on the back, mm-hmm. is just riding yeah. around as the sun starts to rise <laughs> over Boulder yeah. City, looking for your dad. And you're looking and looking, and no, you go to all the old haunts. You go to the places mm-hmm. you found him before, like the rando places he's turned up sleepwalking, and you don't find him. And I actually. Okay, you're gonna. I'm gonna give you a condition. Okay, I, I love it. Uh, let's say you give me are. A condition. Let's say you're scared. Like you, yeah. you're, you're scared for your dad. You don't know where he is, and you've always been able to find him before. But yeah, the sun's up. School's about to start. You know, if you don't go, you know, maybe you got a couple absences. Mr. Horn can't mm-hmm. help you at a, cer- at a certain point. You got to get there and be yeah. on time. Yeah, I think she's got a habit for, of. Uh, being late in the mornings that's been a problem she's been in the principal's office more than once about it so okay. she's gotta get get going so as as soon as no sooner had she uh gone one way past the court she's back in the opposite <laughs> direction but this time like doesn't look at her jock friend at all doesn't look at him she's pedaled to the metal terrified that she's got to get to school on time amazing okay where do we find Heather, Grant? You find Heather exiting the wide doors of the gymnasium slash natatorium at night as the large halogen lights that light up the basketball floor kind of turn off. Shoo, 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 in a row. And as you see her walking outside, she's flanked by a phalanx of other cheerleaders that she is the leader of. And she says... Great job, Jessica, Jennifer, Amanda, Ashley, Sarah, Stephanie, Melissa, Nicole. See you next practice. (laughs) (laughs) And they all kind of veer off away from her like uh, geese finally reaching north or south, wherever they're migrating to and finding their own trees at that point. And she's wearing gray sweats that are like really baggy. 
and she has her the edge of her pastel shirt, which has no collar on it. It's like ripped off in the end of a scarf, like holder thing. It's like keeping it on the edge. And she's walking quickly and she's, you notice that she's carrying a big gym bag, but her book bag is even more filled. And she's walking and she's struggling to get her keys out of her purse, right as she hears the principal come out of the main entrance of the school behind her as she's walking to her dad's Mercedes SL Roadster to get into it. She wants to get into that car so fast before he can say hello to her. Okay. Um, so the principal uh, is walking and are you, how do you, are you trying to avoid her? So you want to roll a move like to kind of get, get in the car really quickly? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, and then maybe it's even just to fumble the keys, the right key out. Cause you know, that's what'll stop you at a car or at your door. A lot of times you have the wrong key trying to get in. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Roll move. So how do I do that? I wasn't listening earlier when you were telling other people. So yeah. your attribute score for body, cause move is a body skill mm-hmm. plus the skill, the skill ranks you have in move. That, and I, that, and do I add it to anything? A roll? Nope, just those two, you roll that many d6s. And okay, then... got it. Understood. Nineteen. Just tell me how many sixes you get. Oh, sorry, two. Oh, so you okay, great. So you succeed. So uh, the, the principal is like, Heather, Heather, Heather. And you, but you like, you find the key at the last possible second and you, and you pretend not to hear her, and you get in the car and you slip and you drive away. All Good right. Good job, Grant. Um, okay. <laughs> great work. So what's, let's say that happened maybe Friday night, Grant, like you, cause you were at practice. Mm-hmm. And let's say Ellie, your scene happened on Saturday. Yep. And then um, Skid and Ann, your scenes happened early Monday morning, like mm-hmm. Sunday night into Monday morning. Yeah. Cool. But now it's Monday. You you all head into school. Uh, let's say you all, the, the three of you who are in high school have homeroom together. Mm-hmm. And Ellie, I just want to get your character in here. So let's just, let's say that maybe. Uh, I can use my photographer. I mean, maybe I'll taking pictures of something they are doing or. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's say there's like some shared campus, and you're and they send, they know you're really good at, at photography, so they yeah. send you around to yearbook take photos, yearbook yeah. photos of like yeah. everyone in their homerooms right at the beginning of school. Uh, so you're in the room too. And maybe, maybe e- Emil was skipped ahead. Yeah, like exactly. He's actually so brilliant in so <laughs> many ways, except math, <laughs> and except his dad math. is still except like, math. you suck. You know, yeah. that makes sense right. though. He wants right. to crush him into a diamond. Yeah. Let's yeah, go with yeah. yeah, maybe his dad like pulled some strings and got him up a, gr- a couple grades yeah. and yeah. you're all in you're all in 8th grade together or ninth you'd yeah. all be in ninth yeah, grade. Yeah, this together. makes sense now. Why it, why he sucks at math because he's like yeah. he didn't even get basic algebra. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll iron that out later. So <laughs> we'll fix it in post. <laughs> let's say let's you all have homeroom with Mrs. Driver, the English teacher, Heather's favorite teacher and also I will say like you know, Juniper, you're a lyricist. You you mm-hmm. really like Mrs. Driver as well, and she's been so kind to you, Emil. Like that, like she's just like a nice person. And maybe Pete, like I don't know, how do you feel about Mrs. Driver? Uh, I I probably like Mrs. Driver. All right. <laughs> uh, so you sit down in the classroom. People are hanging out, gossiping, jabbing. You know how things, these things go. Kids the kids in the 80s, that they're, they're talking. Uh, except that Mrs. Driver isn't there. The bell rings, but Mrs. Driver is not at the front of the room. So, you know, kids start to horse around. And then the principal, Heather, Mrs. Easton, who was trying to flag you down, uh, about you know, ten minutes into when class should begin, rushes into the room very harried, and she's like, "Well, everyone, everyone, please uh, take your seats, please, uh, please, uh, you know, Emil, what are you? Wh- why are you taking pictures? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, Mrs. Driver is uh, she's out today." Uh, and uh, you'll have a substitute for class, uh, and they're running a little Ooh. behind. I, I heard that, Pete. I heard that. <laughs> you watch it, Peter. Um, well, they're on their way. Um, 
Uh, so everyone, please take out your textbooks. Are you reading something? Just take out your books and uh, and you read them very closely. Uh, That's such a thing when teachers yeah. panic. They're like, whatever book you're reading, just read it. Yeah. <laughs> read 50 pages of it. Um, and then don't stop. I finished uh, my book last week. Um, should I pick a new one? Yes, yes. Okay. Whatever, whatever Mrs. Driver was going to have you do, just, just read that. Um, I'm happy to grade everyone's homework if you'd like. <laughs> sure, Heather. Yes. What a great idea. Thanks. Yeah. Really okay. great idea, Heather. Did you Super remember great. to do it, Juniper? <laughs> she says, uh, and she just like reaches into her bag and pulls out her uh, disc man and like pulls on her headphones and uh, pulls out the most giant copy of War and Peace you've ever oh. seen. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. What a flicks. Yeah. Um, is anybody among you empathetic? Yes. You em roll empathy. I am. Okay. <laughs> that was uh, Matthew asking, not the teacher. <laughs> well, Emily's answer: uh, six uh, dice, uh, one one success. Okay, you get you get the feeling that this she's like not only is she kind of harried and stressed, but she seems like she's like legitimately worried. Um, mm -hmm. and she's uh, she starts to head away, and she's like, um, actually, um. Heather, um, Pete, Emil, and Juniper, could I see you out in the hall? Just for just for a moment. Everybody else, read your books. Read your books. Cool. She says and just stuffs the book back in. Uh, you can hear Don't Stop Believing on her headphones as she like moves down the aisle to head out. Emil is carrying his camera and he's just like ready for anything that might happen. <laughs> We'll capture um, the moment. <laughs> capture this moment. <laughs> capture this very stressful moment in the principal's yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. All right. So she gets you all onto the hallway and she says, I, I know some of you are very close with Mrs. Driver. Um, this is going to seem like a strange question. So I appreciate you uh, just keeping it between us. But haven't you heard from Mrs. Driver since Friday? No. No. Not me, no. no. Uh, Why is she missing? Um, uh, no, I'm, I'm, no, 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 nothing like that. No, I just, you know, I, yeah, get back to class, will you? And, uh, she turns and she just, like, rushes down the hallway. What do you do? Uh, Emily's gonna point at Pete's shoulder, like, be like, Pete, like, try to get to his attention. Yeah, uh, Pete looks down, way down. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> like um, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting the sense that something bad has happened. Yeah, I think you're right. And he, Pete, like looks back in the homeroom, just, just, just kind of stares for a second. He turns back. He's like, "We could just leave." Yeah, we should leave. That's what we should do. I mean, I don't know why I try to get here on time if they're not even going to take attendance when I get here. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta take care of some stuff. I think. I don't know. Well, well I mean, I think. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we could find out what happened to Miss Driver. Yeah. If we leave, though, can you can you guys not tell my dad? Oh yeah, no, of course not. I'm not sure, telling. I'm not telling anyone this has happened. But that's a great idea. I think we should find out what happened to Mrs. Driver. Yeah. I mean, might as well. Beats sitting around in homeroom. All right, so you guys are going to ditch school and go see if you can solve this mystery? Yeah. yeah. And I think I know where she lives. Like, I looked her up yeah. in the teacher directory before, and, like, if I drive past her, like, I make sure to look outside and I'll wave at her on the street if I see her. Like, I've mm -hmm. never been in her house or anything, but, like, yeah. really nosy and really into this teacher. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. Uh, so roll sneak, all of you. <laughs> oh, 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 noy. You got to get out of the school. It's a body-based one? Yes. Body plus plus whatever you have in skills. Oh, oh all failures. Same. Oh, no. Two successes. Okay. So, uh, you, so using the skill sneak, Heather, you can give away one of your successes to Pete. I, I love a success if anybody has one. 
because <laughs> uh, I don't have any. I'm unsuccessful. Some people would say I got promised, but today, unsuccessful. <laughs> yeah, I unfortunately also got unsuccessful. Oh, man. <laughs> we suck. So the four of you try to sneak out of the school, and Heather is very sneaky and helps out. Who do you help out, Heather? Uh, probably Pete. Okay, so she helps Pete. Like he, Pete's like... <laughs> oh, actually, like, you know, I could use my luck and re-roll. Like okay, my you can, one yeah, you luck point, right, and then you could give a success. You're right. Oh, I can use my luck. I have so much luck. I'm going to use yeah. That's really great. Oh, oh, that um, just leaves us. Then I'll um, give it. I'll give it to you. Oh my Jennifer, god! I guess. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like it's like we need to boost ourselves out of things, and <laughs> I just like you stand there looking at me, like offering me to boost up, and I'm just like, God. Yeah, damn you can it. see this like yeah. low angle shot looking up. <laughs> I think yeah. we'll be fine, though, because I got three successes on the, four, the second one. Great. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah. So between Heather and Emil, you're yeah. able to maybe you go to, like, the girl's bathroom and there's a window, you know, you can yeah. jimmy the lock on and get out of. Yeah. But as you're going down the hallway, you happen to have you have to sneak past the main office Ooh. and you see Mrs. Easton standing there talking the vice to principal. Yeah, well, she's the principal. But yes, you see oh. her talking to the vice principal. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> and she is livid. And she is like, is that is that fucking sub here yet? Like, what is going on? I'm starting to get worried. This isn't like Mrs. Driver. Like, do you? Hear? And she pulls the, pulls the vice principal in close and she says, on Friday, she just got up and walked out of her six period class in the middle of the day no explanation she's the, all they were she was leading a class and she stopped talking and then just walked out and no one's heard from her for the past three days i feel like there's a camera shot of like juniper stopping to like listen to this and then just turning to jog after her friends who have helped her out the window. Yeah. Yes. You all you yeah. all hear this. Yeah, exactly. It's like a yeah. like the close shot of like your face is hearing this. Yeah. And you look at each other and you know what you have to do. Yeah. And you'll have to do it next week. No! Oh my god, I wanna keep going so oh, bad. Uh, I know exactly what to do, and I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get murdered by my father. Oh no. <laughs> totally oh, no. bogus, dude. I'm gonna get sent back to Sweden. Like, <laughs> that's how they do it. They're like, if Again. I get one more C, I'm out of here. That's right. They, they don't kill children in this game. They just deport them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on that note, good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next week for more Tales from the Loop. <laughs> <laughs>